Walsh. A mysterious injury was sustained by Will Levis at practice yesterday and is only being described as a lower body injury. Hopefully we'll find out more and how the preseason game is going to break out. But the Titans only have Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis on the roster at quarterback. So Willis could be in line for some extended playing time versus the Vikings this weekend. Jim Wyatt put out the new britches report for this week. The Titans will be decked out in white jerseys with navy blue britches, white socks and white and navy socks on Saturday's preseason game against the Vikings. Speaking of preseason, we had some action last night or lack thereof. Eagles and Browns tie 18 to 18. That's preseason for you. You got two more tonight. Panthers and Giants started off at six o'clock and then Bengals and Falcons kick off an hour and a half or a half an hour later at 630. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Friday morning and a beautiful fall Friday in Music City, USA. Welcome in to Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors, and we have got a big weekend to preview with you. Friday, and we plan on acting like it with our full crew in studio. That includes Titans Radio's 11-year NFL veteran, Ramon Foster, yeah, our yeah. broadcast veteran whose J is always capitalized that's Kayla Anderson behind the glass, the most interesting producer in the world. Robert Walsh keeps us between those navigational beacons. My name is Will Bowling. Friday, August the 18th. It is Friday. And yeah, we're going to act like it. 1045. Once bent, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All the workers. Party. Gonna be a good morning. Huh? Yes, Let's it go. Is. I feel like we're being negligent against it's the workers fine. that work like five to nine. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> or the weird shifts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just Ooh. bottle up that yeah. vibe and make that your bottle this afternoon. The lead yeah. up to this song, though, I was just listening. It feels like for the first time, it's like that little AI beat that he has is is a real nice lead That's up. Nice. Man. It's nice. It's it hyped. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Our number on a busy Friday morning where Will Levis has a lower body injury. Mm. What does it mean for Malik Willis? The rest of the Titans' quarterback situation going into. Tomorrow's preseason game in Minnesota. We've got Brent Hubs of AllQuest.com at 720. Voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, who joins us at 820. And at Nashville SC color commentator and club ambassador, Jaleel Baba, who joins us at 920 this morning, previewing Nashville SC and Inter-Miami in the League's Cup Final. Lots to discuss. Going to go by quick. It Ooh. is. Can't Especially play. for you. You're only here for two hours. I know, man. This is going to feel weird. What time do you catch a flight? Uh, 10. Take me with Ooh. you. <laughs> Can you put us in cargo? <laughs> you know, I heard it gets super cold under there, though. Oh, mm. that wouldn't work for me. That, I know. That wouldn't work for anybody. But, yeah, we can figure out a way. There's always an available <laughs> ticket. Strap us on to the top. Always. <laughs> Strap you on the top. <laughs> Can you imagine being on a wing of a plane? Well, you've seen people open the doors yeah. now mid-flight. What is this, a trend? What in the world? What is it's, wrong? Oh, yeah, people are that. opening the exit doors mid-flight. Yeah. Where? On, pl on, on planes. planes. Well, where on planes? <laughs> the, the, the exit roll, Will. Is you it? hadn't seen the video? Yeah. No. Like, there have been a couple. Like, it lose cabin pressure and all that stuff. It's What's awful. Wrong with these people, I have purged that kind of content out of my algorithm, apparently. Well, <laughs> clearly, me yeah, and Kayla some sickos out here. <laughs> I mean, it pops up on my timeline. I'm going, <laughs> yeah. why is this popping up when I'm flying? Yeah. Oh, well, 
no, I don't really want to have it while I fly. <laughs> I was just like watching that movie Flight with Denzel. <laughs> when you remember he was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk right now. I was mm-hmm. like, man, that was a hell of a 360 you did, though. <laughs> Love that move. You see, that kind of I have a problem with that because, like, it's like who cares how the dishes get washed if they get washed? He landed the plane. Like, like oh, we can figure all the drunk stuff out later, man. He saved so many people's lives. I I can't watch that movie without just getting ridiculously upset. No. You pro Denzel in that movie? I'm pro Denzel. I'm pro Denzel. And what's the movie where he breaks in and steal the dude's heart for his son? I, I, there's not a movie. Training Day. You get, I'm, there's not a movie where I'm not pro Denzel. Every movie he sells me on himself. Yeah, it's hard not to. That's be. so true. I just saw the movie, uh, the ship movie or the a submarine movie, Crimson Tide, for the oh, first time for the about first two. Time? Yeah, I felt dirty watching it. Though, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Does the, the Tennessee fans get to storm the field in the middle or the end of the movie? They didn't. Denzel was Tennessee fans. Okay, he took it. over the ship. <laughs> it was <laughs> could be my team. It could be that my goalpost team. over here. Isn't, isn't there the big speech? It is. Yeah. Yes. Crimson Tide is a good movie on the it USS Alley. I was. I ain't gonna lie, I ended up purchasing it. I was like, I need to watch more older movies to be more, you know, just mm-hmm. catch up on some stuff. And I ended up getting that one, and I, it was really good. Denzel was the dude. Yeah. Was that the most interesting part of your night? Uh, no, this was like a couple <laughs> weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. A couple. No, that was not the most interesting part of my night. Y'all ready for this, man? We're reminding man? you of oh, something no. here. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Yes. Thank you, Bird of man. football Good got job, interesting Bert. in the Foster household. <laughs> yes, man. It's supposed to be fi- a fifth and sixth grade league. Come to find okay. out, the other team had seventh graders playing on this Ooh. team, too. Allegedly. Okay. But it was a kid from our side that knew these other kids on the other team. It was like, those kids in the seventh grade. Uh-huh. It's supposed to be a fifth and sixth grade league. Okay, unsanctioned, so they probably just do whatever they want to, okay? We get there, and we're playing the game. These these some big old boys. These like my size boys, a couple of them. And I never... At seventh grade? Yeah, I never big shame kids in the sense of like height because my kids are tall and big too. So I always play the fair games like, look, I don't know their ages. My kids are big too. You feel me? (laughs) But we they're playing the game, and... Uh, the first possession, our boys get the ball. Miles is on this team, so our boys get the ball. They march it down. Score. 6-0. They didn't have field goal posts, so they had to go for two. Didn't get the two. 6-0. This other bunch across the way gets the ball. Score. Scores again. Scores again. Scores again. Going into the second half, the score is 6-30. to 30. What? Our what? boys is losing. 6-30, to 30, y'all. Okay. Yeah continuation of this game second half gotta be played right okay. all right so we get uh then we end up kicking the ball off it was a onside kick get the ball back our boys get the ball back go down and score lo and behold we get to the fourth quarter 24 oh. to 30 Whoa. oh okay Whoa. is the score go off kings i'm like okay. all right me understanding what's going on on the opposite sideline i'm standing behind the field because i like to be removed now Get out of the way. My kids, do your thing. So, lo and behold, they do another onside kick, y'all. Get the ball back. Go down. Punch it in for the score. 30 to 30. I'm telling you, the whole time they got to go for two. So, 30-30, game tied up because it was 24-30. 32-30 is the score of the game. We kick the ball off again, and this was when chaos go off. You uh-huh. ever had one of those teams where – you knew as long as they winning, it's a good day. I play some Memphis teams like this, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Long as they're winning, they're good. Soon as you start yeah. beating them, 32-30, probably about four minutes left in this fourth quarter. Uh, kid runs the ball back. Real shifty kid, too. Our guys ended up tackling. Somehow, somewhere, somebody got upset. In this level of getting upset, <laughs> I saw Malice at the Palace oh. on the field from kids. Okay, I don't know if there was extra pushing on our side. I missed that part. But what I saw was two kids grab one of our boys and just push his head into the ground and eight town stump him. Okay, like it was the worst thing ever. They were literally kicking one of our players and stomping them on the ground. All the parents, well, not all the parents, some of the parents run on the field, coaches run on the field trying to break everything up. It got to the point where they had pretty much drugged one of our, these are kids, dragged one of our players down to the end zone and was just meleeing on him. 
simply because they had started to lose. I don't know if there was something that happened before then, Goodness. but it was insanely bad. The refs pretty much come on the field, say, hey, no, this is done. Mind you, they were up 30 to 6. We ended up winning 32, 30, uh, 32 to 30 because they called the game off. But that wasn't even the worst part. Of course, the parents get involved. Nah. Of course they do. The parents, it's already bad, y'all. For if for somebody has been kicked out of a game themselves, okay, let me tell y'all. You and have, yours wasn't like that. It wasn't like it, it, nobody wins when you're fussing at a peewee league game, okay? Nobody. Some lady was walking up the hill, come see me. One of the kids <laughs> was dog talking one of the parents on the field. And where that kid's parent, I salute that parent, too, on the other side. Had to, you don't talk to adults like that. Mind you, this kid had also got a 15-yard penalty in the game, too. It was toxic. The coach was stoking the fire on the other side. He yells out, we'll play y'all anywhere, anytime, any field. I'm like, <laughs> coach! Oh, I feel, my heart's racing right now. Don't do this! We're in your territory. Your, fi- your fans are going to be riled up regardless. Don't do this. And then the <laughs> other parents started talking, and I'm yelling at my, RJ, let's go! Keys, let's go! Like, get out of here. And it, you have to walk past their team to get out of there anyway. And I'm telling them, find your kid. Keep walking. Get to your cars. We got to go. We're in somebody else's territory. You can't be out here trying to argue with nobody. I'm telling you, parents, let's keep this stuff mm. about the kids. Coaches, you have a bigger responsibility. Do not stoke the fire. You had your opportunities to win. Stop doing this type of stuff at Pee Wee games. Like, it was by far, uh, it, it, it could have been avoided at all costs on so many yeah. different levels. I've never seen kids stomp a kid out like this before. Well, they had this kid in the corner going to work. That's on crazy. I was that like, wow. That is nuts. And then the coach, like I said, that was the biggest thing. I ain't even falling because he was passionate as heck throughout the entire game. He was the same way. But don't be, uh, they had a chant. Uh, what are we going to do? Punch him in the mouth. I was like, oh. And then they're saying <laughs> that while our parents are up the hill just trying to get their kids off. They're on the Jeez. field chanting that back at them. And I was just like, come on. So who won? Miles and team There did. we go. Yeah, they did win. Those kids got filthy, man. It was, uh, wow. it, it got bad, but hey, we made it out safe. Um, and that's all that matters. Pee Wee football, and we've got this going on. Sounded Y'all. like a WWE it main event. Was. It was. It was. They had like two kids get personal fouls. One slammed his helmet on the ground. And I was just like, Golly. It, it, when it's unsanctioned like that, this type of stuff happens, you know? Goodness. Yeah. Eventful, to say right? the least. I didn't think pro wrestling was coming to Nashville until <laughs> the new stadium's built again. <laughs> oh, Featuring amateurs. You, it was uh, it was very eventful. I would tell anybody, when y'all in public and you're a parent, never argue like that because you look like a fool. I've looked like a fool, too. Don't do not do that in public. Keep it cool. Yeah. Coming up this morning, uh, lots of Titans and Vikings preview discussion as they get ready for preseason matchup number two tomorrow. We've got Brent Hubs at 720 as always. Mike Keith at 820. Jaleel Anibaba of Nashville SC's radio crew. He'll be on the call with me tomorrow when Nashville hosts Inter Miami and Lionel Messi. Uh, he joins us at 920 this morning. But coming up next, the latest on Will Levis, who goes down with an injury yesterday. Uh, all the details we have for you coming up next on our Mo and Kayla to Will. Hey, this is Kayla Anderson for the Ingram Agency, a local agency that was founded from the ground up back in 2010. Chris Ingram, along with his full team of licensed professionals, have created really a strong agency that focuses on serving not just this this area, but all of Tennessee. Now, maybe you need insurance. This is definitely the company to work with, specializing in a wide array of products, including auto, home, life, commercial, And yes, even aviation, if you're looking for that, this is not your average insurance company either. The Ingram Agency was founded on passion for education and support, and their goal has always been to guide and protect clients comprehensively. If you want a family-owned insurance company, which we all want to work with people we trust, right? Well, 
this is a company to work with. Call the Ingram Agency, 615-206-8276 or log on to the IngramAgency.com. Rest easy with the Ingram Agency.
Rolling right along on a Friday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will, powered by all four seasons garage doors. I need Robert Walsh to take the surprise out of his voice in the break that my impression of Will Ferrell doing a Harry Carey impression actually isn't that bad. It's my favorite impression. That and Charles Davis. <clears throat> Charles Davis. Saw him again this weekend, too. Really? He was around. Well, he does yeah. call the game. So yes, that, he does. Yeah, that does he make does. sense. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I was surprised to see him in Chicago. I didn't realize that, but yeah. I should have yeah. anyway. Yes, absolutely. What's your favorite planet? Uh, 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 Mine's the sun. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey. Well, this is Ramon, Kale, and Will. Cubs win. I hate to see him. Cubs win. And tell them how you hey, are. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? You know, this Friday morning, we've got Brent Hubs coming up at 720. Mike Keith, voice of the Tennessee Titans. Now it's going in like country. It's got a little, a little country, country twang to it now, doesn't hey. it? Harry Carey gone country. Yeah, Harry Carey gone country. Charles Davis <laughs> gone country. That's anyway, who that was. Thank you. That was solid, Will. Go Cubs! What a, what <laughs> a time Charles, you hear me say that. Charles Davis come in and press you about using his his uh, voice. And, like, put you up against the wall. Okay. He's so nice, well, though. Like, I don't okay. think he would. He is He's so, so nice. nice. It's just a good human being. I'm just like, Charles. Yeah. You the man, man. For uh, Matt in the FNM Bank chat, uh, try to keep up. Uh, that, uh, that, was, that was Harry Carey. <laughs> what did he say? That's why we're doing Cubs. No, I don't worry oh, about gosh. it. Anyway. <laughs> Will Levis got hurt yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, big opportunity for Malik Willis. Mike Vrabel mentioning that Will Levis did not finish practice. And uh, Jim Wyatt even uh, gave detail of this because he writes on Titans.com that he was eyeing Levis when he walked off. Notice he never returned and uh, it said he wondered if the head coach would mention it. He did. Uh, Jim Wyatt writing, Levis left the field with a trainer following the final snap of a team period. He'd just been forced out of the pocket to his right and ran toward the sideline. When the play was over, Levis walked back with the team into the middle of the field before eventually retreating the other way. Levis first entered a white tent adjacent to the practice field. Then he remained inside for a few minutes and then headed to the locker room. He never returned. Mm. There you go. Uh, Paul Kaharski reports yesterday that uh, it is a lower body injury, uh, according to his sources, so... Uh, hard to speculate on exactly what it is when you're only given half of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not disparaging the report itself, obviously. It's it's legit information. But uh, for the rest of us, waiting game to see um, really what we find out over the next 48 hours. But I, I do think at this point, it's safe to assume that it's the Malik Willis show tomorrow in Minnesota. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll say this, too, when it comes down to – preseason injuries this is my personal opinion let's just all keep our powder dry on them yeah. i think coaches get super sensitive right kelly you've been 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 around coaches for a long time when it comes to like camps mm-hmm. they get super sensitive they don't have to tell you information and when it comes to like preseason injuries if they can shut you down just to get you to the season they will i took the stance of if he walked out on his own went to the tent they took him in early it's probably not as serious i'd hope um, I just think we're going to be super cautious when it comes down to preseason injuries for almost anybody in this sense. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. I think this time of year, even when you see the cart come out, we've heard some, you know, OK news come out of that during camp so far. Not all of those have been season ending or even several week injuries. So I think more so than anything at this time of the year, it's like precautionary especially if you're at like a joint practices type of, situ- type of situation. You kind of just want to get your guy off the field and get him medical attention as soon as you can. I'm hoping that it's nothing serious, um, but it did it did pique my kind of curiosity of what will happen tomorrow in that preseason game against the Vikings because, like Will mentioned, it looks like it is going to be, be Malik Willis for the entire game, which – I don't remember the last time covering the Titans that I've seen that happen without two quarterbacks splitting time at least. So that will be really interesting in terms of Malik Willis. And honestly, maybe to put him way ahead of Levis at this point. Yeah. yeah. If he performs well. De- depending on what all happens with Levis moving forward, like it really does break down to Malik is going to have to manage his emotions, the change of offensive lines. Do they actually That's open a lot. I, It is. Do they actually, you know, open up the playbook a little bit more? 
You know, like this is a game plan situation for Malik Willis. He's just not out there. Oh, man, you'll get 30, 40 reps. No. You know what I'm saying? Like he might end up getting 60 plus reps in this weekend. You play Tannehill at all, you guys? At all? Is there even no. a thought of it? No, you okay. don't. Not at all. Okay. Do you want to see him play, guys? I do. I kind of wouldn't. I, it, it wouldn't bother me seeing him get a quarter. Quarter? Yeah, I'll take a quarter. For who? Tannehill. Tomorrow? Yes. Oh, really? I, I would love to see a quarter. Hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I know it's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I, I, is, it, know? is it bad that I'm less incentivized to see him if Traylon Burks mm-hmm. isn't there to get reps with him? That makes sense. That makes sense. It's, there's yeah. one less first-team wide receiver to build those game rep chemistry moments with your quarterback, so I'm less incentivized to put the quarterback out there this week. Yeah, and there's no D hop probably going out there. So no, yeah. I actually thought you said you wanted to see him at the beginning of training camp. I want to see him next week. You want to see? That's him. all. Okay, I see my him. words were wrong then. Okay, at, at the beginning of camp too. I mean, it, for me, it was yes. I want to see him play because you're in a brand new offense with brand new receivers. But yeah. but with Traylon going out hurt now, it, again, there's nothing you're going to gain in terms of their chemistry by putting Ryan Ryan out there, like I'm saying, but. Really, for me, the the incentive was just I, I want to see him in one game, and and the last one that's here. Yeah. By the way, that injury that nagged him, I believe, his last year of college, the, part of it was a toe injury. Just to let everybody know, with Traylon Levis, Levis, Levis. Levis. With Levis. it was a toe mm-hmm. injury. Sure, and the heck was. Uh, I'm not sure if it was that because he's been making. It happened all preseason long. I was it, just bringing it to a because te- people always yeah. want to know. Well, is it the injury that happened? You know, is it a re- reoccurring? You just never know with this type of stuff. And quarterbacks always take care of themselves. They're like baseball players essentially. Mm-hmm. If they got anything going on there, they they go get it took care of. And again, it's early in the preseason. You got to think about it. we got this week, all the next week, and then two weeks before the season start. How far are we away? We still. I mean, Labor Day weekend is yeah. where we, we were Peyton Manning days away from Tennessee football yesterday, which means that we are now 23 days away from Titans football today. Come on, baby. We are right yeah. around the corner, y'all. 23 days away. That's enough time to get healthy. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the interesting thing now, guys, is that when I originally wanted to see Ryan play more in preseason, I was under the impression that there wasn't going to be this contested of a QB2 battle. And honestly, I, I think now I'm willing to change my stance on that a little bit because you need every opportunity that you can get to evaluate who has earned that spot more, Malik Willis or Will Levis. Uh, what really is important here, guys, is I now have a much better opportunity to win our show bet about the <laughs> Titans keeping two quarterbacks because there were no injury caveats given to this bet. Mm. And if the Titans keep two quarterbacks and it's just Malik Willis, huh? Mm. Hmm. Interesting. So it's getting real technical there. If, if if Will Levis is on IR to start the season, you know, just on there for a couple weeks, and and it's it's Will Levis and Ryan Tannehill. I see how it's going here. I've never heard this man politic like this, Kayla. So are you getting in shape for those push-ups? No. Like? I'm the not bet was in- if the Titans keep two quarterbacks, Ramon has to do fifty push-ups. It's now forty-five, by the way, because Ramon. Did a, a second bet of it. You think I could make this paper in the oh, trash can? Oh, that's right. So it, 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 if I don't, I'll make it 45. He didn't. Uh, and so 45 push-ups now is the bet. And then I said they would keep two instead of three. And so I, we never specified who. We just said two or three. Well, the fact, huh. that, the fact that you're even attempting to, 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 to cope with what's going to happen, let's me know that you're nervous. You're saying if if he just so happens to go to, you know, just a six week IR or something. No, was that not a bet? Well, listen, I will say the 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 breakdown of it. Enable for Willis to come back off injured reserve, he would have to make the fifty three man roster. Mm. If you're put on injured reserve before, you you cannot come back. Your season is over. So for, if Will Levis did go on the injured mm. reserve that he was able to come back from, that would mean the Titans initially kept three quarterbacks. Yeah, but like, oh, but what are you going to do? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Just have one quarterback? Like, what's the – like, of course they're going to keep three then because they have to have a backup. So, like, 
Is the bet null and void at that point? Never in my days have I ever I'm, mentioned no, I'm, you I'm literally this way. being serious. Because, no. like, what are they going to do? Of course, they would have to put him on the active roster. He's the second round pick. He's Will Levis is making the team. That's not under debate here. And, and Malik is making the team, too, at this yeah. point. Well, he is now because Will Levis is hurt. We well, could probably come to an understanding to squash it, or maybe you both we do push We both do 25 push-ups. There you go. No, 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 no. no. That's not <laughs> Whiteboard, okay, and I'm gonna write a single letter on here, okay. Will you hold this? The, the, what? There's how am the I supposed to know? Is that Bert? How am I supposed to know okay, Will Levis well, is gonna get that's hurt? A, the that's L. a big ass L. What, was that's I supposed a, to predict a Will Levis injury the, in Minnesota? Will for this it's, bet? It's okay to owe me 45, man. It's all right to owe me 45. All right, Will. We you were very strong in your stance early. Yes, there's a Erroneous lot of devil. On all accounts. There's a lot of devil in the Erroneous. details when we come down to like making bets. I should have laid it all the way out, like IR accounts. That's on Ooh, me. That's detailed. At this yeah. point right here, though, okay, look, guess what? Three quarterbacks is making this roster. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah See, that now. was such a quick answer by Kayla. It made yeah, me believe it even more. That. It made me believe it so even not? more, Kayla. They're going to now so, because Will Levis is hurt. So what happens if they keep three quarterbacks, y'all? Mm-hmm. Will's going to be Buff Bagwell out here. You hear me? <laughs> Nah, that's already. Gonna be what do you know Buff, about Buff, Buff, Buff Bagwell? Bagwell. Like, like that wasn't my era. Buff Bagwell is Will's new name no after this one. Okay. Buff look, the stuff Bagwell Come over there. On, it's man. not gonna be fifty. Buff Bagwell. Not gonna be. Yeah, not gonna be forty. Oh, Buff Bagwell. Okay. A little, uh, a yeah. little background on Buff Bagwell. Wow. When he got to WCW, they told him uh, that his calves were not big enough. <laughs> he gave so implants. He, I, he yeah. went in and got calf implants. Oh, I can't. So Buff Bagwell has fake calves. Oh, Good. God. Oh. He was such a legend, man. Here's the thing. I'm great with paying off a bet, and I was starting <laughs> to expect to. I have no problem with this. The issue is that the reason why they're going to keep three quarterbacks now is because Will Levis is hurt. Ramon, you can't argue that. That's 100% it's, it's, No, accurate. no, no, no. That's very circumstantial, Will. Absolutely oh, but not yeah, the case But right these there. are the circumstances no, 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 that no, we no. have been given. The way I look at the way these two the, these two guys battled in Chicago, you can't cut either one of these guys. And I think we both not said yet. that. And and this is where we both went. Because on Monday, we had this conversation, y'all. We did. Well, I said, you know what? As it stands right now, and I'm pretty sure, Kayla, he agreed with me because he ducked his head after he said it okay i was like malik is probably still number two mm-hmm. and will win yeah that's probably so yeah so far there's and one malik third is of- still playing right now he has a good game this weekend have you seen a hockey game be called two. after one period or three I, I saw a football game be called after three games last no, night. True. Literally, that's true. That's yeah. very true. No, I'm going to stand on this, and I don't care if the F and M Bank chat hates me. They can sit and then they can spin because Ooh. I'm just going to close that window out this morning. <laughs> I don't care what any of them say or what any of you say. There needs to be a caveat to this bet because if they keep three quarterbacks now, when they keep, yeah, when they keep three quarterbacks now because Will Levis is hurt, then. There's an injury reason here. No. Yes, there is. No, yeah, you guys are all assuming that Will's it's, badly hurt, too. Yeah, and, and Kayla, I didn't want to speculate. Okay, I know Just my small-J journalism aspect of this game. No, but the, the it, thing it is, even say, even if he misses three practices, that's enough reason for them to just keep Malik Willis. I, I'm not assuming he's badly hurt, no. No, I, I'm assuming that Will Levis and Malik Willis will also be on this roster with Ryan Tannehill is what I'm saying. There was a better opportunity for Will Levis to beat Ryan Tannehill in the starting job than it was for him not to be on this roster. Three quarterbacks will be on this with Malik at number two at this point, Will, especially if Malik gets a whole entire game, too. I just think it's the most unique situation. We knew this coming into camp that it was going to be a battle. Yeah. And not usually do the Titans keep three, but because of this rare incidence with these two quarterbacks battling and the age gap or, you know, the age closeness, that's why I would say three. 100%, Kayla. And, and to your point, like, one being a second round of this past year and third round of last year, uh, two years ago, phew, that makes perfect sense. The best thing that could have happened for Will as far as him winning this bet would have been for Malik to just bomb out. And he didn't. True. He had a good weekend, did he not, Kayla? Those yeah, are the good. things we're, we're here for. And now he gets a whole game to himself to just let Will just eat it. So are you each doing 25? No, absolutely not, Kayla. <laughs> absolutely not, Kayla. Yeah, we'll, we'll file this with the court of a 
We'll file this with the court of appeals. <laughs> oh, the court. Okay, we can take it to uh, we can take it to the front office. I heard I'm Bert very surprised was a by lawyer. you. Oh, yeah, you, Kayla, can you represent me in this one? No, oh, sure. Oh, I've my parents said got, I needed to be a lawyer growing up, so I'll I'm go ready. ahead and put my retainer down. I got twenty with Kayla already. Twenty thousand. That's my retainer. Thanks. Yep, right there. I got my lawyer. Look, I mean, we put a court in session <laughs> Tuesday. Right? We put a court in session Tuesday. Apparently, I'm not allowed to call courts in session. I'm on the the show. So yeah. Yeah. anyway. <laughs> Yeah, Malik uh, Levis and Tannehill will make this roster. This is the first time in a very long time since they had three quarterbacks on this team. I feel good about making a bet like that and not getting suspended. Get it? Mm-hmm. No gambling? Yep. No you proud of yourself? Suspension I'm there. Really proud of myself right there. Just don't do it in the bathroom. <laughs> what? Like, don't make the bet in the bathroom. It's true. What are you talking about? Well, you a lot of these it. guys probably sitting on the toilet making bets on in the bathroom <laughs> and on the fa- at the facility. How did we lose him that quickly, Kayla? How do, how do you we sound like everyone that watching right the show on 1045 The Zone TV? Uh, right how, did, how, did, how did we lose you when we make I should have known a, a, not a to pick joke. a fight with you because you're always going to get the side of the effing and bank chat. I did. <laughs> the court of opinion. We didn't even ask. It, and I got a great lawyer. That's, that's your this problem right lawyer. now. Lawyer. KK. Yes, because you and Ron, So I'm just by myself here. Yeah. Do I have Bert? Do you, I have anyone? Bert might be good. My counsel. services can be purchased. Okay. I'm a there mercenary. I gave 20 to my lawyer. Will ain't even offer you a cup of coffee yet, Bert. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't get out of bed for that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. But I don't know if we've seen a quarterback have an entire game, though, in a while. It's bizarre. I've seen, like, offensive linemen do an entire game. Like, I remember, like, in my second year, I did, like, middle of the first quarter for the entire game. From yeah. the first quarter all the way out was the last time like I did something like that. Yeah, that's like long that. for a preseason. It is very long for a preseason. But I also went from playing um, left guard. I went to right tackle and so then you, left you tackle. Moved. Yeah, they were trying to see if I could be a swing day tackle. Is what that was. Sure. I don't know if we've ever seen a quarterback be exposed like this in today's NFL. A lot of different uh, lines. A lot of different guys you're going to be throwing to. Yeah, and then of course with them being more protected these days too coaches just want to make sure their depth guys are yep. around um erroneous on all accounts erroneous <laughs> on all accounts <laughs> accusations <laughs> false <laughs> accusations and i'll start warming up <laughs> bro it's all <clears throat> it's good man that's a nice track suit you have on too today keep you warm track suit? yeah that's what okay. you call those okay. adidas track suit thank you yeah nashville sc he's got all right now i'll take any compliments i can get Does it got the, you got the matching pants too i don't you okay. don't Oh, you got to do the whole thing, Will. <laughs> With some Adidas, uh, Kayla. He to set that off. Set it off. Yeah. <laughs> like, on like, this Friday. Like Boosie out here, man. Come on. Okay. It's Friday, you need to act like Anything one. else? No, it'll be all. Are you going to do That'll like full push-ups or are you going to do like girl push-ups? Do like I need to get down, your down and do push-ups again Kayla, for you both don't. of you? you? You don't. Yeah. If, you, if your nose doesn't touch the ground, it's not a push-up. Mm. You made the rules on that one. I wouldn't did that, Will. My shoulders are tight, so I can't touch my nose on the okay. ground. Yeah, it's all good. If your nose doesn't get close to touching the ground, it's not a push. Ah, uh, it get close. <laughs> you know a 45 straight? Uh, we'll see. Or are these anytime push-ups so I can call you while you're on a date with Peyton and be like, hey, Will, give me 10. I don't know. <laughs> we got to see it. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, Will can have Peyton film it for us. What you think? She might help him out. See Will at like an SC game and be like, hey, Will, give me two. Coming up next, what Mike Vrabel had to say after yesterday's practice. Coming up on Ramon Kalen. Will. Hey, it's Will Bowling here for my friends at Lee Company. Are you looking to check some items off your summer home to-do list? Maybe you're looking to freshen up your home's look before hosting friends and family for a cookout. Well, available 24-7, 365, the Lee Company home improvement professionals, they've got you covered. From pressure washing your driveway or deck to drywall repairs, landscape lighting, painting, and more, Lee Company, they're all you need. Contact them today at 615 615- Five six seven one thousand, or visit them online at leadcompany.com to schedule your appointment. That's leadcompany.com for all your home improvement needs this summer. Look, you got to go to these guys. They're going to give you everything that you need to get ready for those fall football cookouts that are here, ladies and gentlemen. Looking forward to that. Lead Company, 615-567-1000, online at leadcompany.com. Lead Company, all you need.
Friday morning on a Ramon, Kayla, and Will is powered by All Four Seasons Garage Doors. Visit allfoursseasonsgarages.com slash Nashville. 615-737-1045 is the number if you want to jump in. Uh, we mentioned Will Levis' injury that is going to make me get a little bit stronger for once in my life. That's going to be fun coming up in a couple of days when push-ups are happening. But we've got another injury to talk about that Mike Vrabel did address yesterday, and that is uh, Traylon Burks, who uh, did not practice, of course, yesterday after suffering that l- suffering that leg injury, which Ian Rappaport says is a... Uh, LCL strain, uh, which we have established through occupational therapist Ramon Foster, is a lateral collateral ligament, which is good to know. Yeah. Uh, Mike Vrabel gave an update yesterday saying, uh, quote, I don't think it's going to be a long-term thing. No structural damage. We're anticipating him being back. I'm not putting a timeline on it, but I think it was the best case scenario. Wow. Ooh, good words there. It sound like, you know, they dodged a bullet right there, man. And they yeah. did. Um, like I said, figuring out what a lateral collateral was. <laughs> it sounds fake, doesn't <laughs> it, it? It does sound fake, but that's the best thing you could have asked for. I think a lot of us wanted him to make it to the season. Mm-hmm. He's been as healthy and as good as he's looked all, since he's been a pro. So I really was looking forward to him maybe playing a couple of reps, but at this point, no, just get him to the season or – Week two, whatever the case may be. And I think the biggest, if you have to play the other side, you know, in any negativity that comes out of that, which, like I said, is positive, he'll be, is that he won't continue to be able to build on those reps and the momentum that yeah. he's had. But I feel like he's already at the point with the growth he had in the off season, um, and just, just understanding everything better that he can hop back in. And I don't see it being a big deal. Right, yeah. like I don't yeah. see a big loss of momentum it with seemed, this injury. Seems like he's learned so much over this last year on how to train, how to take care of himself. That this rehab stint shouldn't be a bigger, shouldn't be a big deal as it would have been last year. Mm-hmm. Or you know, if he hadn't uh, been battle tested as he was, I think he left this off season and just got hardened. You know, mentally too. Uh, yes, one hundred percent. So. um Titans have a really good training staff, so getting him back to where he needs to be at should be, I mean, a walk in the park, I'd hope. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'll ask you guys this, going back to the quarterback discussion with Levis. If he is hurt for an extended period of time, again, we're, we're making an assumption there, but I think it's safe to say that the Titans at least need to be thinking about a contingency plan. Uh, what about Josh Dobbs again? Uh, in Cleveland right now, Dorian Thompson Robinson, the rookie from UCLA, got the start over him in that preseason game last night for Cleveland. Uh, DTR, the the rookie, appears to be doing decently well at least. Mm-hmm. Not sure what contingency plans uh, Cleveland wants behind Deshaun Watson, of course. And it, you would imagine that Dobbs, who has been in Cleveland before, also probably has a still decent shot of making that team, but. It is interesting, though, that should that guy become available again after training camp, are you interested in someone like him coming back to be a backup and and help out Malik Willis again? I think you need someone like Dobbs, and that's the first guy who came to mind. I was actually watching a replay of, for some reason it was on last night, of Cleveland and uh, DTR, Dorian uh, Thomas Robinson, right? Is that correct? Dorian Thompson, yeah. yeah. So Thompson, I believe. Thompson. Thompson. He was playing at that point, yeah. and I was like, man, he he looks good. And I know not a lot of people talked about him coming out of the draft, and then that brought me to the point of, oh, yeah, I keep forgetting that Josh Dobbs is there, um, and along with Kellen Mond. So I, I feel like it, it's a, it could be something that possibly it, it might not happen until the end of training camp, and they figure out what they're doing over there. I believe he signed a one-year deal. Right. A million? Yep. A million. But that's half. not, that doesn't mean, is it two years? Uh, it says one year, two okay. million, five hundred a sign. How much is that in terms of, would that be a big deal if they it let him? It says two million is guaranteed at signing. So he get the full okay. deal, which that's throwaway for that's, teams yeah, these days. That's yeah, that's nothing. And there's nothing orange tinted glasses about that. We're talking no. about the last guy who started a football game for the Tennessee Titans, potentially coming back into the roster, who is known as someone who fits into a quarterback room pretty well and Mm -hmm. helped Malik Willis uh, at the end of, of last season. So anyone implying that, Oh, these UT fans just want to talk about their guys. Like that's 
stupid. I like the idea that he could come back. I do. Of course. If he's a serviceable vet when it comes down to you understanding it. Like, that's the thing about the backup quarterback. Who's somebody that can help you win games in an extended stretch if your guy is out? That's what you're looking for. You look across the league. Everybody has a guy behind the franchise guy that does similar things to the starter. Mm-hmm. Dobbs was very easy when it came down to him picking up the offense. Do I believe in Malik? Yes, still. But what we're asking is this. If it comes down to a guy being able to mentor again to help out a young guy, do that. Now, the other portion that you say, well, it'll stump Malik's growth. Well, no, it can actually help assist it if you bring in a guy that can help or that knows what his role is going to be. I think if you put Malik and Dobbs in the same situation again, Will, I think Malik is uh, vastly better than where he was yeah. and how he handled it last right. year. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you. If the conversation is about keeping three quarterbacks and having that third contingency plan on the practice squad, then this wouldn't even really be an indictment on Malik Willis because Dobbs wouldn't have to be up for every game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So the, the question is for you guys as we close out hour one. Do you trust Malik Willis from what you've seen this training camp to let him be the backup quarterback if Will Levis is unavailable? I actually do. And that turning point came, I think, just this past week. Um, But I'd say yes. I'm going to say no just because I need a little bit more. I need to see if he can do it. What Coach Max say? Uh, Keeping uh, keeping the candle lit. I want to see if he keeps it lit. Yeah, Yeah, keeping the wick lit. I think I'm actually okay with it. You are. I didn't think I would be. Um, and again, the precedent I'm going off from last season was the off season award winners on offense were Dylan Radins and Des Fitzpatrick a season ago. That's true. So I don't regret not feeling super confident in the Titans mm-hmm. off season award winners being, you know, guys to make major strides, but I'm willing to admit Malik has been a lot better than I thought he would be this camp, but he's got to keep doing it. Yep. Got to continue on that. Coming up in hour number two, uh, more Titans headlines in the uh, practice report from yesterday. The star of the defense is one of the guys that we have been discussing all week who needed a major week against the Minnesota Vikings. We'll tell you who that is coming up next. It's Ramon Foster for Genesis Diamonds. And Genesis Diamonds' most extreme values on diamond engagement rings is coming to an end. Y'all have until Sunday at 5 p.m. to get the price of a lifetime on certified GIA uh, diamond rings. Response has been credible if you hadn't heard. People have driven for hours to buy like a dealer buys. All GIA certified diamond rings are on sale and a full 20% discount off Genesis Amazing Everyday Value price. We're talking about values you've never thought possible. From a half a carat up to 20 carats, all hand-picked for maximum brilliance and all graded by the most prestigious gem lab in the world. That's the GIA. So don't be surprised to see other jewelry store owners and diamond dealers shopping alongside you. They have rounds, radians, pear shape, ovals, princess cuts, cushion cuts, emerald cuts. Uh, Genesis has the largest GI diamond ring selection you've ever seen. And now through Sunday, you can take advantage of this rare buying opportunity limit. One per customer, please. So get the middleman, get the Genesis no middleman direct importer price minus an extra 20% off all GI diamond engagement rings. Now through Sunday only at Genesis Diamonds.
What's going on, 701 from the 104.5 The Zone Studios? I'm Robert Walsh. A mysterious injury was sustained by Will Levis at practice yesterday and is only being described as a lower body injury. The Titans only have Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis on the roster, so Willis could be in line for some extended playing time versus the Vikings. That game is on Saturday. You got local coverage starting at 4 o'clock with your Lee Company countdown to kickoff. Titans Radio will take over at 6, and you got kickoff at 7 o'clock. And it's a busy weekend, especially here in Nashville. You got Nashville SC and Miami. That game is at 7 p.m., and you can also listen to that on 105.45 The Zone, but you need to download the app. Make sure you download the app, pick the stream, and you can listen to Will Bowling and Jaleel Lonnie Bobby call that game this weekend. Uh, For the Titans game, Jim Wyatt put out the new Bridges report. Babe, wake up. The new Bridges report is out. The Titans will be decked out in white jerseys with navy blue Bridges, white and navy socks for the preseason game versus the Vikings. We had some preseason action last night. Exhilarating action. Eagles, 18. Browns, 18. Got to love a tie. You got two more tonight. Panthers and Giants start off the night at 6 p.m. And then Bengals and Falcons kick off half an hour later at 6.30. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5. The Zone. Welcome to your 7 o'clock hour on a Friday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors as we preview a big weekend in the Music City. A League's Cup final between Nashville SC, Inter-Miami, and Lionel Messi. You've got Titans and Vikings tomorrow in Minneapolis. And you've got Tennessee continuing fall camp. Brent Hubs of AllQuest joins us for his weekly visit on the show coming up in 15 minutes, we've got a full crew here for one more hour before it is Kaylin Will with That's Robert right. Walsh, the musical stylings. Ramon Foster here before he jets off to Minneapolis. <laughs> hardest working, working man. Yep. Hardest <laughs> working man in show business. There we go. Hardest working man in show business. Get it together, Will. Uh, off to Minneapolis. Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh. I'm Will Bowling. Friday and we're acting like it with one hour down. Mm. All the workers, all of them. Come on, y'all. Who are you working? Seven to three, eleven to seven. <laughs> Anything in between? Seven to seven. Mm-hmm. That's right. Friday morning, right here on the station. First Friday with high school football on the station as well tonight. That's right. Myself and Lucas Panzica will have the call for Alcoa's trip to Ravenwood tonight. The eight-time defending state champion, Alcoa Tornadoes, taking on the Ravenwood Raptors. Should be a good one. Looking forward to watching some football in person for the first time. I got to go to the website and check out who won last night, too. If you Oh, well, uh, it was a a walloping. It was, it was, was it really? Oh, geez. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hate when that happens like that, especially on opening weekend. Goodness gracious. Uh, f- high school football is back. Middle school football has been playing already. We get college next week. It is a very exciting time of the year. Also, Nolensville Little League playing tonight. Yes. In the, uh, Little League World Series in Williamsport facing Rhode Island. Rhode so good Island. luck to the the guys and gals. Stella Weaver, shout out. We could spend a whole hour just doing like, hey, these are all the high school football games tonight. That will happen tonight on the station. Yeah. Um, so I always feel bad when I give like one team or one game a shout out because you immediately get like five messages <laughs> that are like, don't forget about this team. It's like, I, I promise you I'm not like we're good, but I do want to mention that it is notable. Uh, Lipscomb Academy plays IMG Academy tonight here in Nashville. 
First game for former Titan and new Lipscomb Academy head coach Kevin Mawai. That's Taking right. the reins of the uh, Mustangs program. That, that is going to be really, really interesting to see what they're able to do with uh, a couple Tennessee commits yeah. on that Lipscomb team. And uh, we can get into that and more with Brent Hubbs of AllQuest.com coming up here in 15 minutes. Can I say I'm very interested to see how Dilford does with UAB too? Uh, mm. Certainly. But, yeah. Th- their facilities are nice, y'all. I was down yeah. in there on their campus uh, recently. They got a nice campus. It's, it's, yeah. it's, they're doing a lot of stuff on that campus, man. I kind of want to see what it's going to turn in, into, considering they lost their program well, a few years that's back. That's what I was going to say. To come back yeah. and, and already have built it back up. But nowadays, you know, coaching is tough. But mm-hmm. if he can just do a decent enough job, I feel like that's just going to launch him to the next landing spot for him. And that's what's so sad about yeah. it, too, is you know that's the next move, right? Mm-hmm. 615-737-1045, our number. We mentioned the uh, headline in hour number one, Will Levis uh, exits practice early, went three for five in team periods, including a touchdown uh, to Gavin Holmes, was eight of 12, according to Jim Wyatt, uh, in his two practices yesterday. Uh, better day for the team overall, uh, certainly. And Christian Fulton had a one-handed interception. On Kirk Cousins, uh, was beaten on one-on-ones by Justin Jefferson. But overall, Christian Fulton, the guy that we wanted to see show up in a big way, I think certainly did in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, and what a better br- bunch to do it. It's not like you're getting a, a nobody of a quarterback. Kirk Cousins is one of those franchise guys. He's played well. Uh, they won the NFC North last year and one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver in the entire NFL. For Christian to come out of this thing on top, man, uh, if I was his agent, if it's Rosenhaus, Rosenhaus would be here in Nashville next weekend trying to get a deal done. That's kind of the way I look at the, what mm-hmm. Christian Fulton's done so far in the preseason. That may be premature on me, but I look at the business side of it because if he goes out and crushes it this year, all in all, with no plan whatsoever, you know, as far as re-signing him during the season, he can just take his talents and go somewhere else unless they're willing to franchise tag him or something, you know? It's never been the question of lack of talent or can he be that number one corner. That's never been the question. The question has always been, can he be available? Can he be out there for at least 14 games? You know, 15, like it's always been so inconsistent with the injuries with him. Now I think what you had mentioned you're seeing that at a different level now and going and proving that in joint practices against some really good wide receivers. But then you're also looking at the change of his body. Um, I just think there's a little change of even personality, more confidence in himself, knowing I feel healthy going to the, into the season that I'm not going to get a hammy or this or that. And maybe it happens and he comes back and recovers quickly. But right now it looks like he has done it a lot with his body yeah. and his mindset in the off season. Like this guy, I think is going to take it to another level this season. I, I just want to ask the question too, because I feel like we all fall victim to this or honestly on the bad side of this. Do we prejudge the guy's first few years in the league? You know, like Christian is, it, it's essentially year four for him to where he's really catching that stride. I think we're, we're super fast in today's society in general to write off something or somebody. Uh, if they have one or two transgressions, you know what I'm saying? If there's, ever a a hiccup in what somebody's going on, then we're out on them. Mm-hmm. You know, the same way we're watching Malik's situation or Levis's situation or truthfully Tannehill. Like, what is your true options behind him is the same thing I say when I look at Christian Fulton this year. He's just now coming to his pro style. So it, where's the governor? Where Where's the actual line on what's acceptable in the guy's career and what's not? Yeah, because we've seen examples go both directions. We have yeah. with guys who just don't figure it out or, you know, I think Malik Willis is certainly an interesting scenario in this. And and you guys know that I pretty much gave up on him after the past season. But when you draft a quarterback in the second round, that's not just me giving up on him. That's the franchise pretty much giving up on him, too. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I, I, for for all the conversation we have about this, I, I don't think that is an opinion really for individuals that that is the opinion of a team when you reportedly were very close to taking a, a quarterback at 11. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Peter Skronsky had not been available, if Peter Skronsky is a, a Chicago bear right now, Will Levis is probably still a Tennessee Titan. I would think so. From I, all reports. I like the lean on that too. Well, and it makes you wonder too, because John Robinson is responsible for drafting Malik Willis 
it almost makes me think, man, props to this, I guess, Titans team, unless it's, you know, Mike Rabel 100% was the guy that, you know, was favoring Malik Willis, like for giving him the opportunity to continue to grow because you don't have to do that, right? They didn't have to give Malik Willis an opportunity this season to battle for the backup spot if they think Will is the guy. So I almost say, hey, good for the Titans too for continuing to develop him at least yeah. and give him a shot because that wasn't Rand's guy. No, he wasn't. And and this is the thing though too. None of this is personal when you take these types of make these types of, types no. of decisions either. Like a team has to continue to try to get better. The fact that you what you saw out of Malik last year, I'm with you. Will. I was in that same seat. Just like I don't know what it's going to turn into. I was hoping we saw those changes that we're seeing right now. But all in all, none of this is personal. Teams have to figure out ways to win. It doesn't make us a hater either Mm-mm. for saying that. Hey, you drafted a quarterback that could have been a first round pick, and that probably isn't good for the guy who's the incumbent. Like. We're not haters for pointing that out. That's just genuinely the facts of what happened. Yeah. It's a business at the end of the day. Would love for the guy to be successful, but it's not about the way I feel about a person being successful. There are a lot of good people that aren't successful football players in the National Football League. Very true. You could say the same thing about Josh Dobbs. Would have loved for that guy to be a successful Tennessee Titans starter, but, you know. Business is business. It's the way the league goes. Yeah. yeah. It's going to move on with or without you. Uh, just ask Jim Irsay. Um <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> Brent Hubbs joins us, fallquest.com, for his weekly visit. Uh, Reports are out of Knoxville that Joe Milton may have had his best week of practice in the offseason this past week. And I can see the look of hope and the gleam in Ramon Foster's eye. He likes to hear that. We'll hear more from Brent Hubbs coming up next. It's Ramon Foster for Two Rivers Four. Uh, the F-150 has been the best-selling truck for 46 years, if you guys did not know that. And Two Rivers Four has been selling the F-150 for over 40 years, okay, and been leading this market and community in selling F-150s around the Nashville Mid-State area. Two Rivers Four has a huge selection right now, F-150s on the lot, and they're all priced below. Guess this. MSRP. You can get something below the selling price, okay, or the asking price. You see, tourists will always sell for the best price. The trucks are clearly marked. You have no gimmicks, no shenanigans, just an honest deal and a speedy process. And did I mention, Tourist 4 has non-commissioned salespeople, so you'll never feel pressured into buying something. If you see something you like, guess what? They'll guide you there. If you don't see it, you don't have to worry about them pressing you into buying anything off their lot if it's not for you. There's a reason why Tourist 4 has been the best in business since 1983. So if you're in the market for F-150, call, click, or go see my friends at Two Rivers 4, located in Mount Julia, just seven miles east of the airport. Two Rivers 4, powered by Ford, driven by people.
Friday morning continues on our own Kayla and Will, powered by all four seasons garage doors as we talk Vols. With Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer, I'm Will Bowling. And joining us on the phone lines this morning, VolQuest.com's Brent Hubs on the first day of Friday night high school football around uh, Middle Tennessee and beyond. Brent, there's a little chill in the air. feels a little bit like football today. It's a, a good Friday here in Nashville. How are you? I'm doing great. It absolutely is a great Friday. And uh, we got high school football. We're two weeks away from college football. We got some NFL preseason going on. Ramon Foster is the happiest guy in the world, and I'm riding his coattails. I love it. <laughs> Far too kind, man. <laughs> Brent, I, I made a quick trip to Knoxville yesterday calling some some soccer for SEC Network, but just doing that drive, like seeing the Smokies, like it, it, everyone needs kind of like a rehearsal for what it's like to do that first drive on game days. Like I, I woke up today ready to go. For, uh, for football, but it sounds like Joe Milton has, too, the past uh, couple of practices. Um, I know you guys wrote about this in the war room on VolQuest. Uh, what have been the reports on him recently and, and maybe him uh, having a, a couple of his best practices so far this offseason? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's had a good command. He knows what to do. I just think he's playing uh, more efficient. He's playing faster. He's delivering the ball very well uh, in the stuff that we get to see, the routes versus air. Um, all the intermediate stuff, the deep stuff has been really good this week. He's had good touch on the ball. And I think he had his best scrimmage um, on Wednesday um, in terms of production. Now, there's some things they have to clean up. There's no doubt about that. That's part of it. Um, just some operation stuff between snaps, not just on him, but on everybody. But, but Joe Milton's had a really good week. I think Joe is rounding in a really good form with these wide receivers. And I think Joe's ready to go play some football, as is this team. I, I think it's Today is kind of – today and tomorrow really wraps up camp. Uh, it's a true game week mode that you kind of jump into on Monday. And, and, Brent, how much of that has to do with the change at offensive coordinator and Joey Halsley and, and Josh Heupel stepping into a bit of a different role in game? How much of that is, is still a, a talking point uh, among the team and uh, kind of on your list of maybe concerns or question marks for Tennessee going into week one? Where does that rank for you? Nah, it, it doesn't. I mean, not very high because uh, Josh Heupel is so heavily involved in play calling. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what the operation issue was between snaps. It, it, it could have been as simple as the the center not getting to the ball fast enough for him. And, and my guess is it was very, very minuscule. But that that's something that Josh Heupel and his staff really practice as a coaching staff. Uh, it's really unique. You don't see this very often, but – uh, the offensive coach staff wears a headset the entire practice. And when they go into 11 on 11 work, even though they're not all in their booth or wherever, lots of times Joey Halsley will go up to the tower and call plays from up there just so their communication, they're working on their communication through the headset. Um, they've got their guys with the drapes and the sideline signals. I mean, in 11 on 11 practice periods to end practice, they will do it very game-like because Josh Heupel wants to be at full tilt with, with this offense at, at tempo uh, the, when they get to game number one. So it's unusual to see assistant coaches wearing headsets the whole practice, but that's what they do at Tennessee. When it comes down to this offense going into this next year, how, how do you view the process of it actually happening? What could be the one thing that I'm sure Alabama is trying to attack this offseason when it comes down to production of this team? Well, I mean, I think everybody's going to look at what Georgia did last year and try to figure out if they could do that. Um, and what Georgia did is Georgia won in the in the defensive interior uh, extremely well. Uh, Jalen Carter had a big day. Um, that's obviously an elite defensive front that Georgia had a year ago, but they pushed the pocket in the interior. You want to try to do that if you're attacking Tennessee because the quarterback doesn't take deep drops. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to be as physical as you can be uh, on the outside against the wide receivers. And what Kirby Smart and Georgia did last year is they grabbed, tugged, pulled, held, tackled, whatever needed to be done. And, and they knew going in that they would get some penalties, but they were okay with it. They, their, their point was we would rather give up a 15-yard penalty than we would a 75-yard touchdown pass. And we don't think at the end of the day the officials are going to call every one of them that they're going to eventually start letting some stuff go. It's a little bit like Tom Izzo basketball, right? Feed them up in the first four minutes of the game, you might get called for six fouls. But at some point, that official is going to swallow the whistle a little bit 
because he doesn't want a game where they call 70 fouls in the game. And, and I think George, that was George's approach. It worked because of what pressure they could get up front, and they didn't have to commit extra people to the box when Tennessee tried to run it. So Tennessee couldn't get their balance. How many people can do that is the question. George has really been the only one. And Pittsburgh, I'll give Pittsburgh credit. They mm-hmm. could do that and, and really stifle Tennessee's run game as well. But, but outside of those two teams, nobody's really been able to do that to this, to, to this point. The question is, can they this year against Tennessee's offensive front? And with Joe Milton at quarterback, that's what we're all going to get to start to learn at Nissan Stadium in two weeks when Tennessee rolls in and pick on Virginia. Pittsburgh ended up having a, a, a first-round draft pick in that disruption, too. That that also helped a whole lot also, Hubs. Uh, yeah, that guy was a freak, by the way. A he, total freak. He I was. Mean, freak. Man, Kalaja Kansi is who we're speaking about right now as far as uh, disrupting that defense, man. Um, also, the other side of that, then, we got to ask the question. What's the O-line report this week? I know they're trying to pull it together, and it usually takes a little bit more time, and there is no preseason for offensive linemen to jail as far as uh, the college uh, world goes. How are they looking right now? Well, I think it's getting better. Um, you know, I, I think the, the tempo helps when they play fast. Um, I, I think that bothers defenses. I think it slows down pass rush over time because – the defensive guys are chasing the football every play. Coach is screaming, chase the ball, finish at the football. Then you got to turn around and sprint and line right back up. So when they can get in their tempo, I think the, protect, the protection improves. Um, probably a little better 11-on-11 protection than it is one-on-ones, uh, Ramon. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of offensive linemen will say defensive linemen have the edge in one-on-one pass rush drills. I don't know. I'll let you debate, debate that one for another time. But, um, you know, a lot, of people, a lot of offensive linemen think they're at a disadvantage in that drill. Uh, but I think it's I think it's gotten better. You know, Ollie Lane settled in a little bit at center. Uh, he's not Cooper Mays. He won't be Cooper Mays. Uh, but I think he's he's cleaning up some operation stuff. Needs to probably speed it up a little bit more. I, I think they're going to platoon at left tackle and I, or excuse me at left guard and at and at right tackle probably the first couple of weeks. What's interesting is we talk about continuity all the time. You got to have five guys on the same page in unison and all those types of things. Glenn Ellerby, in his history, has never been afraid to play six or seven linemen by design in a game. When they were at UCF, they would oftentimes rotate in a guard in the second quarter, almost like a running back gets the third series or the fourth series. They would do that with a guard or a tackle when they're at UCF. They haven't done that much at Tennessee. They did it last year a little bit at the left tackle with, with Mincy and Crawford. Uh, but I think you'll see Tennessee rotate a little bit more on the offensive line early in the season in particular. Then we'll see where it settles into as they get into SEC play. Brent Hubs of VolQuest.com joining us now to talk everything Vols. And Brent, on the opposite side of the ball, um, some guys sticking out, including a guy who continues to get healthy uh, in your uh, war room report, Omar Norman Lott. You said he continues to be disruptive. Yeah, he does, and and this is a guy who has been better uh, as a transfer than, than Tennessee anticipated coming in, and uh, that's one of the interesting things about this team and, and really about Josh Heupel since he's been here. Um, you don't build your roster in the transfer portal, but Tennessee has hit in the portal, I think, extremely well. A lot of hype with Dante Thornton. John Campbell's going to start at left tackle. We know what Hendon Hooker did as a transfer, and Javante Payton and guys in years past. But on defense, Omar Norman Lott and Keenan Peely are two defensive guys who are definitely going to help this football team. Peely will start. Norman Lott's going to be in that rotation. I think Norman Lott loves this defense because it's vertical. It's downhill. He gets to use his athletic ability. And that athletic ability has shown up in both scrimmages, uh, not just in a pass rush situation, but also against the run. Uh, he is very much entrenched in that rotation for Tennessee on the defensive line. I wanted to talk facilities really quick because now that the season is right around the corner, just any updates you can give us on um, how the stadium is looking because I know they've been doing some renovations, some repairs, and you've got that uh, Austin P opener coming up soon. Well, you've got some bathrooms being constructed <laughs> under Gate 10, which everybody's like, praise the Lord. There's yeah. probably some bathrooms outside near the south end of the end zone. Uh, the Wi-Fi is going well uh, in the lower bowl. I think it's going to be a chance to be completed uh, for the lower bowl. That's supposed to be a two-phase project. They're probably a little bit ahead there in terms of some installation. Uh, but, you know, they, they've gotten quite a bit done 
and from a fan amenity standpoint, that's going to be a nice addition. Uh, you'll see some brickwork in the in the tunnels coming into the lower bowl in the south end. They will finish that project next year, but you'll see that in the south end. It looks really good. Right now, they're starting to clean up some of their mess where they've been working in the south concourse. That's going to be, you know, a under construction project from now until next year. Uh, but but it's moving in the right direction. And when you go by and look, you're going to see how wide that concourse is going to be and how much nicer it's going to be a year from now when, when they get there. But, uh, you know, construction's been moving right along on some things. They put in new TV monitors in the underhang on the lower bowl for everybody there. And, um, you know, they continue to upgrade. Danny White's made it very <laughs> clear he wants to have a construction project in Neyland Stadium every offseason <laughs> until they get that thing renovated the way he wants it renovated. So uh, we're going to see a lot of um, – a lot of scaffolding, a lot of workers, a lot of hard hats, and, and a lot of uh, drilling being done over the next few years at Tennessee in that stadium for sure. Brent Hubbs, VaughnQuest.com, our guest this morning. Uh, Brent, Deshaun Bishop and Tyree Weathersby out for Tennessee this season now officially. Uh, for Weathersby specifically, how big of a blow is that for Tennessee's defense? That's tough. I mean, I don't think he was going to be day one impact that everybody was going to go, wow. But I think he's a guy that, as the season had gone along, he was going to play more and more. You know, he did not get here until June, so he was just starting to, to figure things out. But athletically, um, physically, the way he played, pad leverage was really good for a young player. He had impressed early on. So uh, that, that was a tough blow for Tennessee because, again, Rodney Gardner wants to play 12, 13 guys up front. And I think Weathersby would have played some early – but would have played more and more as the season progressed. Bishop um, had a nice spring, has done really good things, has been better than I thought he would be coming out of Carnes High School. Uh, but the reality for, for Deshaun Bishop is, you know, Jalen Wright's running with this running away right now with the running back competition. Then you got Jabari Small, um, then you got Dylan Sampson, then you got Cam Seldon, then you got Khalifa Keith. Um, it, it was going to be hard for Dylan Sampson to factor at running back. Um, but, but he had done a nice job and had been better than a lot of us thought he would be since he arrived in January. But Weathersby's the one that would have played and, and had a chance to make some kind of impact this season. Always love giving a shout-out to the Carnes Beavers. Ooh, the Beavers, the baby. That's right. <laughs> Brent, nothing, I, like the, nothing like the Carnes Beavers of North Knoxville. <laughs> genuinely, you could ask these guys every time we're talking Ooh. about an obscure high school football program in Tennessee <laughs> that has a fun nickname. I mean, as the son of a Clinton Dragon, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, alumnus, I, I've got to give a shout out to these East, East Tennessee teams who are far more creative with their nicknames than we are here in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, not you can't, everybody can't be the Tigers and the Eagles, right? <laughs> right. I mean, we got to. We got to mix this thing up a little bit. So we got some Mavericks, we got the Beavers, you know, uh, the Admirals. We got a lot of things going on. What was here. Anderson County? What were they? We covered their game. Who are they? They're what? Mavericks. They're Mavericks. They're, they... the, Ma they're the Mavericks. Yeah. yeah. They're the Mavericks. Yeah, well, of course, the Procone Firebirds and Ron Slade. Yes, that's fantastic. A good one. As good as it gets, yeah, but still, good. absolutely. Yeah, uh, but, but the, the Mavericks enter the field through a cattle gate. That's they do. just not Ooh. something you see it's in a lot of in a lot of high school venues. They've got a dog also that goes and picks up the tea for them That's after great. kickoffs. We, we got to get the video of that up. Anyway, um, I'm getting <laughs> off track here. Uh, uh, Brent, Jordan Ross said to commit on Monday night. Uh, a guy that is uh, ranked at on three is the number four edge rusher in the country. Uh, where does Tennessee stand with him? You know, it feels like Tennessee's in a good spot. I mean, uh, we'll see. You know, what, what we're learning in recruiting is one phone call at the at the end can make a difference. You got the whole NIL factors in there and all those types of things. But Jordan Ross has made six unofficial visits to Tennessee, uh, plus an official visit. Um, that's seeing the balls a lot. And mom seems to be really comfortable up here. I think he's comfortable here. Um, I don't think it's going to be Florida. I don't think it's going to be Georgia. Is there a surprise? It's not LSU. Is there going to be a surprise team out there like, like an in-state Auburn try to come in, in, the, in the, at the end here? or even Alabama coming in at the end. You know, we'll see. Um, but he has been all about Tennessee and has visited Tennessee a bunch. So if you follow the visits and kind of follow the four finalists, out of the official four finalists, Tennessee looks like the clear-cut leader. Now the question is, is there somebody who's not listed as a finalist that, that lurks out there here in, in the final push uh, over this final weekend until his decision time? Another recruiting question, as it's getting tighter and tighter as these high schoolers are about to start their season, uh, I'm checking out you right up, and, of course, you bring up Cameron Fountain. 
He's committed to USC in California, but it's slanted right now that Tennessee may be the front runner. How, Brent, how do you manage all of this? Uh, the kids from Atlanta, Georgia, just also for perspective. So it makes sense that an SEC team will be in play, but I didn't expect this. Well, I don't know that Tennessee leads, okay? I mean, I know he's on the on the recruiting prediction machine. You know, they list Tennessee as the favorite, but that was that was it was that way before he committed to SC. Tennessee was the favorite. He went to SC and I, I think saw some Hollywood stars and, you know, got caught up in a little bit of the glitz and glamour of, of L.A. and went, man, this is really cool and committed. And he's been firm there, but he's he is having conversations with, South Carolina. He's having conversations with Tennessee. He's never stopped having conversations with Tennessee. Um, it's a lot easier for the family to get from Atlanta to Knoxville than it is from Atlanta to LA. Um, and, you know, the other thing, too, I mean, you got USC jumping into the big team. You really want to play in cold weather. Yeah. That's something the California schools have never had to recruit against before, right? What are you doing on an official visit when you go to SC? Hey, let's go to Venice Beach. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at the ocean. Let's go look at everybody walking around in bikinis. Hey, this is what it's like all the time in your world. And then all of a sudden you look up, hey, we're playing in Ann Arbor, and it's going to be really, really cold. And not everybody wants to play in the cold. Right, Ramon? Right. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I think I think that Tennessee continues to work that one. Um, the question is, that can they get him on campus for another visit? If they can get him up here for a visit, then certainly earmark that one as one to watch closely uh, uh, down the finish line until December. But it doesn't really get real to me until he gets on campus and takes another visit somewhere. We'll see if uh, Tennessee can get him here for a game this fall. He is Brent Hubs of AllQuest.com, joining us Fridays at 720 here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Uh, Brent, thank you as always. Definitely. Absolutely. You guys have a great weekend. You too, too Brent. Yes, sir. There's Brent Hubs with us uh, hitting the recruiting and Vols headlines here to uh, continue our number two. I, I love every time Brent mentions someone taking more than like two or three visits to one place, the scoff that we get from Ramon, and for good reason. <laughs> Just like, man. Yeah. It hasn't been that long since you played, but there have been so many changes that the world is completely different. And I have to adjust this on the parent side, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, coming up, the uh, Titans player who was sent away from the practice field yesterday. Uh, is it possible for a Pop-Tart to be a little spicy? Ooh. It was yesterday in Minnesota. Uh, coming up next.
Friday morning continues on our own Kaylin Will, powered by all four seasons garage doors. If you're wondering, uh, if you've seen me out bobbing my head at all or just looking happy, I'm probably listening to this song or this album. The new uh, Post Malone that is sweeping the nation. I'm sad that I'm like the only person in the building that's listened to it. <clears throat> Hadn't heard it yet, man. It's okay. That's on me. Mm. I'll accept that. That's on me, man. I've heard like one song. Have you? Mm-hmm. I ain't even give it a shout, man. What was I listening to last week? Probably some ratchet stuff. I'm going to have to get ready for some uh, some big game music tomorrow. Why yeah. so? Talk to us. What's going on tomorrow? League's Cup final. Mm. Crazy. Big time. We'll, we'll talk about that coming up. Uh, Jalil Anibaba, who has... The big game music queued up on a Bluetooth speaker in the booth every uh, match will join us at 920 this morning. Um, Jaleel, an equally big Post Malone fan as me, thankfully. I'm a Posty fan, too. It's just he went super singy lately, and now it's, uh, you got to catch up he's to it. He's trying to show his vocals that he he's is. not just a one, it's fair. you know, uh, one trick pony. He wrote me in with the rapping, though, and I was like, oh, even though it was harmonic when he was doing it then anyway, but he he got me with the I guess the production of the first couple hours. Sure. I will oh, yeah. say he's leaned in so okay, so when he started, he was probably one of the ugliest dudes on the planet. <laughs> like he just not yeah. not that attractive physically. Okay. But he has leaned so far into the ugly guy thing, I yeah. think he's become an ugly <laughs> hot guy. Because when you look at him, he's like covered in tattoos, he's got the gold teeth now, and like the dumb face tattoos really don't mean as much now. Because he's don't. leaned so far. There's a line that once you cross it, you go from ugly to hot. Like that. I've, I, I've been trying to find that line my whole life. Like, do I need to get a face tat? Aren't we all? Do I need to lean all the way in to overcome the ugly barrier? Like, he needs to write a book on this. Yeah. I, mean, I swear when you've got musical, like, genius to you or you can play a music, like, instrument yeah. and sing, these girls, they don't care what you look like. That's true. They just are going for, like, that vibe. Pete, Pete Davidson, same thing. This, it's just you, you know, right? it's just he comedian. is what he is. He's a comedian. comedian. That's comedian. what it is. Making them laugh. I didn't like the under the eye tattoos Post Malone did, but if it's a part of the 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 costume, run with it, right? There you go. Yeah, I would hurt. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Our number. Uh, what did hurt was uh, also was tear tart. <laughs> Get into it with Garrett Bradbury yesterday. <laughs> did a little punch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, what, what what Tierra did to one of their offensive linemen, did y'all see the hump that he gave him? Uh, yeah. And Dedico Autry, who Ooh. bull rushed uh, a Minnesota Vikings offensive lineman as well yesterday. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh, man. Uh, again, we only see clips of what, you know, the good stuff. I saw right. people saying the Titan secondary suck. I was like, that's only like maybe two plays yeah. you've seen. You didn't see the entirety of practice. It's the same way we saw, um, I, I, I guess it was, uh, no, it was Arden Key that got got yesterday. Yes. By Darasol. Mm-hmm. By Christian Darasol. Darasol. But it, it, looking at that, also, he got got later in the day by, uh, what's his name? Danico. Danico Autry yeah. bull rushed. Uh, Bull rush Darisol for uh, a sack, according to Teron Davenport, who said, Laud have mercy. I say yeah. Laud because he said L-A-W-D could affect their Teron. Uh, Danico Autry just put a bull rush on Christian Darisol, pushed him right back into Kirk Cousins for a sack. Teron always keeping the people engaged. He if is. Y- y'all hadn't searched Tier Tart on Twitter. <laughs> oh, it, my, mine was trending at some point. This time. was a uh, Reggie White like like hump, player hump he gave to him. He lifted that man. Oh my gosh! gosh. Yeah, just I just went saw right the video. Through. Is oh that like the equivalent sakes. of getting like as an offensive lineman getting bull rush like that? Is that hey. the equivalent of getting dunked on in basketball? Yes, it like, is. Yeah, yeah, Bert. That's like. Michael Jordan, like mm-hmm. that, that's like Vince Carter dunking on you if level. Y'all hadn't seen oh this. Oh my gosh. I'll retweet you it from the show account. You right just now. saw it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Your reaction was, oh my. Oh my goodness sakes. The tweet literally says, Reggie White would be proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he smiled down on that one. And it looked effortless. It did. Like, really. Goodness I'm sakes. like, my goodness. Oh. Um, you know what's crazy, too? Teron pointed out, I did not understand this. We've been seeing videos from the stands <laughs> of a lot of this stuff that has come yeah. out, like the Traylon Burks. So supposedly they can shoot video in the stands, but like the reporters that are there cannot. Correct. That's the one rule. Correct. When you yeah. have open practices every day, you have the ability to record, but teams can't come in and record and uh, reporters Media. can't record. But the fans, they get that absolute, they they get that uh, that, that that go call that freedom, on that one. Yeah. Yep, sure Goodness. do. Who was number 54 on <laughs> Minnesota? 
I got to put some context to the dude he lifted. I believe he's a new man. Yeah. <laughs> New I, man I meant to text y'all last night <laughs> in the warmups for that soccer game I called last night. They played, they played it. Truth Hurts. Oh. And I literally, I'm like, I was just looking up to like see who was warming up or whatever. And I just hear, new man on the Minnesota Vikings. You can see what I'm saying? Right. That, by the way, was Garrett Bradbury. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah you starting, did. that's, that's Garrett match. Bradbury. That's yeah. starting. Oh, yeah. Um, first round pick. Dude, he in 2019. worked. <laughs> Go to our show account and look at this clip. And that's not even Jeffrey Simmons. Like, with no. respect to Tier Tart, like, the, the Titans nose tackle that was an undrafted guy is out here snatching souls on a Thursday training camp practice in Minnesota. For every guy that goes against the NWI, mm-hmm. these are the types of players, him, Tier Tart, that play these roles on these teams that, that's capable of doing this stuff. That you overlook sometimes. I gotta give Buck credit. I saw his tweet last night. He had the same take we did. He did. Yep. He's he's and he then he also said this about Tierra. Tierra. He said Tierra is gonna be a twelve million dollar year guy, and a lot of people around here is gonna be looking like what. And when you realize what Tierra does on a day to day basis, it won't be a shocker to folks like us that watched him and that understand his importance. Your core players, as you like to call, gotta play good roles. That's right. Uh, Have a good trip. I hope so. Oh, it's already eight. <laughs> oh, that's a quick two. Dang. Two hours down quickly. All right, yeah. uh, enjoy it. Fly safe. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk to you Monday. No doubt. Make Get sure both hands on the wheel, belt. Mon. Make sure yeah. you don't uh, steer it off the air. I will not. Don't open the exit door. Whatever you do. Be a good thing. And if I have a post show interview, don't be hesitating and just yeah. oh my gosh. I guess I got so nervous with that, y'all. I'll be honest with you. So uh you want to give us your uh, words of wisdom for the people on your way out to Man, for seriously hug somebody, have a random conversation, uh smile. Just talk to each other, love each other, and always remember your Twitter fingers and your mic is always hot. That's half time of the show. Hour three coming up next, little leagues cup preview for you on the other side.
What's going on? 8 o'clock on the dot from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Robert Walsh. Big weekend for Nashville sports, What? even if the Titans aren't here. Titans are taking on the Vikings this weekend, and their could, uh, practice schedule could be impacted by a injury that was sustained at practice, a mysterious injury by Will Levis only being described as a lower body injury. The Titans only have Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis on the roster, so Willis could be in line for some extended playtime against the Vikings. That game starts at 7 o'clock. Local coverage with the Lee Company countdown to kickoff starts at Four. Titans Radio takes over at 6 for that kickoff at 7. Also, in Nashville, Nashville SC taking on Miami. That game is also at 7. If you want to listen to that, you got to download the 104.5 The Zone app, and you can switch back and forth. You want to listen to a little bit of Titans, want to listen to a little bit of Nashville SC, you can do both of those things. Just download the 104.5 The Zone app. We had some preseason action last night with a good old tie. Eagles, 18. Browns, 18. Got to love that. Uh, we got some more preseason action tonight as the Panthers take on the Giants at 6 and the Bengals and Falcons start an hour and a half later, or just a half an hour later at 6.30. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Second half of the show on a Friday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors as the big man heads to Minnesota. 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 That's right. In the air uh, in just a couple of hours, meaning for the rest of the show, it is Kayla and Will with Kayla Anderson. Robert Walsh making the show happen. I'm Will Bolding. A Friday, and for the first two hours, we've acted like it. And for the final two hours, we promise you. You will do the same again. That is right. We continue into the 8 a.m. hour. Voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, coming up in 20 minutes. Let's go. We've got Jaleel Anibaba from Nashville SC stopping by at 920. Sammy Kincaid as well talking some high school football as week one continues tonight. Lots to discuss, Kayla. Yeah. Two hours to do it. This is a packed weekend for Middle Tennessee sports, even if they're not being played right here. A lot of them are, um, but just lots of things to tune into if you're interested in any teams here, whether that be high school or Little League or the Titans or, of course, Nashville SC. That's right. It is a good day to have a couple of screens and uh, maybe grab a laptop, a phone. An iPad situation, throw us up on the 104.5 The Zone app while you watch Titans preseason football against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be uh, one of the most fun and just energy-filled days I think all of us have ever had in sports in Nashville. Those of us uh, around Geodis Park, in Geodis Park, if you were able to secure a ticket, I genuinely cannot wait. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? Because you've been in a lot of those Nashville SC MLS games, some of the other things outside of that. And I feel like every atmosphere is incredible, but I can't even imagine what Saturday will be like. It's going to be crazy because I I think you're going to have a lot of people that, you know, in this being a a city that attracts a lot of tourists, are going to fly in to Nashville to go to this game. Soccer fans just in like the state of Tennessee and in the South, right? I mean, Lionel Messi has played all of his games in either Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia so far through League's Cup. So first time for this region, other than obviously the state of Florida, Mm -hmm. that he's been in the South. I also, though, I don't really consider Florida the South. I just consider Florida, Florida. I do too. 
Like it's kind of the it's the basement of America, so to speak. Like it, Florida is so different from the rest of us. But that being said, I mean it, this is going to be just amazing tomorrow. So with the crowd, because we obviously know they're going to be Nashville SC fans, right. but. How many do you anticipate are true Lionel, uh, Lionel Messi fans that will be there, will be wearing the jerseys? That's always um, something I question in something like that, like the League's Cup, yeah. where you are getting so much attention on Messi. Uh, how many true fans are actually going to be there of his? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. As we talked with uh, Apple TV's Jake Zivin, who's on the TV call for the final, yeah. uh, who has done a lot of Nashville games and a lot of Miami games just this <laughs> entire season. And uh, we're we're gonna catch up with him in our one hour pregame show tomorrow that starts at seven o'clock on the on the Zone app. But he essentially said like it's been interesting in different places, right? Because in Dallas, there were lots of cheers at the beginning, and then the game started and there were some boos, mm-hmm. and you know they made him feel like it was a bit more of a hostile environment. Philadelphia though was the really interesting one because they booed him coming out of the tunnel okay. just for warm-ups yeah. in classic Philadelphia fashion. <laughs> but maybe the boos weren't quite as loud as a lot of people expected. The Sons of Ben, which is the supporter section in Philly, giving it to him a little bit, but maybe not you know a ton. But Miami also scored in the third minute of that game, so kind of you know took away the energy out of that building pretty quickly. Um, the crazy thing is that Miami has scored in the first 15 minutes in all five of Lionel Messi's starts. Wow. That's the, the crazy thing. 15. And yeah. L- Lionel Messi, Messi actually has a game uh, goal in every game since he has joined yeah. them, which is insane too. He has his, he's in the middle of his seventh seven game goal streak of his career right how, now. How much did he, just adding that piece, even in his later years of his career, right. was what has helped Miami? Com- I mean, that, weren't they not? They're playing last. very well, I mean, like, and they're still. Their last place in MLS. Sure. The, the crazy thing about Miami is that they have 22 goals in the first 22 games of the season. Yeah. In six League's Cups games, they've scored 21. Six games, they've scored 21 goals. Four out of the six games they've played, they've scored four goals, including against Philadelphia, who has two losses in their last 30 games at home in all competitions. They are making teams make mistakes that, they don't really make. Here's the thing about Nashville SC, though. So go back to November 20th, 2020. These two teams played in each of their first playoff games in their club's history. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nashville SC smoked Inter Miami, beat them 3 0. Uh, in that game, you had a lot of the players who are going to play tomorrow for Nashville. Uh, out of that starting 11 for Miami, zero of them will start in the game tomorrow, as many as six or seven. Uh, could start for Nashville SC in their lineup tomorrow that started that game in 2020. So you, this has been interesting to watch because yeah. there's so many storylines of this thing. And Nashville is a team that in their MLS existence, of, of course, started in 2020 and USL in 2018. Uh, before that, uh, a fan owned club here, obviously that was a semi pro club and we can get more into that, but it, you have both these teams starting at the same time You're in right. 2020. Miami did it with glamorous, European signings, maybe went for more flashy, big names. Nashville has built this thing the right way and the smart way, and they've made the playoffs every single year they've Mm -hmm. been in the league, and they're going to make the playoffs again this season. This is a complete mix of styles in two very different paths to get to the same point, which is a a League's Cup final. Give me the way Nashville has done it 10 times out of 10. Yeah. And what they've been able to do to get here. They've made the playoffs every year. They've been successful uh, in league play, and now they find themselves in their first final against the team it all started against on November 20th, 2020. And give Nashville SC credit for the talent they've brought in. And, you know, Hani Mukhtar has been a star. Yes. A league MVP this past season. What he does out there, incredible. I mean, just any given night, you can count on Hani Mukhtar, I feel like, if you're Nashville SC. Um, and just the way he does it, 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 he's a star in his own right, right? It, nothing compared to Lionel Messi because that is an international star that has been a star on the scene for years. But Nashville SC, they have some players, and I think it'll be fun for them to get some big-time eyes on them this weekend with the League's Cup. While the storyline will be messy, why not try to take advantage of being Nashville SC 
like you said, growing it the right way and putting yourselves on this international scene on Saturday. I think it's going to be incredible for the city and the team. Yeah, Hani Mukhtar uh, for Nashville SC, if you are unfamiliar with what the boys in gold are doing on a day-to-day basis, he's been the best player in MLS the past three seasons. Uh, last season had 30 goals and assists combined. Mm. Uh, he has 36 goals, 19 assists recorded since 2022. That's the most of any player in MLS uh, in MLS regular season play. His 34 goal contributions in 2022 was tied for fifth most in a single season in MLS history. Mm. Uh, he is the third player ever, ever in MLS to have five or to have 50 goals and 30 assists in a three year span, 56 goals, 35 assists in a Nashville SC uniform. When you look at what he has done in MLS regular season play, Hani Mukhtar has been a part of 91 of Nashville's 161 goals in club history in league play. Like that's uncomprehensible he's as good as it gets yeah he really is and they're so lucky to have him here and i know he embraces nashville as well my question to you will is legitimately like what is what needs to happen for sc tonight to to get that dub because i think people just assume Messi on the other side yeah that's the winner I think you have to stay true to yourself. And it was interesting in the semifinal against Philadelphia Union, um, which Miami won 4-1. to one. Philadelphia runs a very similar setup to Nashville. It's a formation that is very high pressure, attacking, two strikers, get in your face, win the ball, play in transition. But they switched their formation a bit. And they played three center backs. They played five in the back mm-hmm. and had one striker up top and went away from their identity. And it hurt them. And, and they went down 3-0 at halftime. Came back, were able to get a goal back. Uh, Alejandro Bedoya, U.S. player, uh, ended up losing that one 4-1. to one, But they weren't true to who they were in their attacking style and the pressure that they put on Miami. I don't think Nashville is going to get away from who they are in, in this game. Gary Smith, the head coach, is as comfortable in what this system is and in what the, the brand and identity of this club is tactically as anybody in MLS from my point of view, every time that we've seen Nashville SC have an opportunity like this at home, they've stayed true to who they are, and they've set things up true to their identity. Mm-hmm. So I, I really think that it's going to be um, a, a super interesting matchup. And for Nashville, got to keep Messi and, and Miami off the score sheet in those first 15 minutes. Nobody has done that in the time that Lionel Messi and Inter Miami have played from the start. Uh, I think that's going to be big uh, tomorrow. Uh, Just have a hunch that maybe from my perspective, um, you know, Nashville comes out firing. Yeah. Why not? And you know what? Lionel Messi, when you think of him on a team, teams are probably intimidated. I feel like if you're Nashville SC, you're at home. Embrace that. And just don't be intimidated by that, right? Just play your own game like you had mentioned. I think that's the best game plan for sure. 7 o'clock pregame coverage, 8 o'clock kick on 104.5 The Zone, digitally on the 104.5 The Zone app. That is where you can find us, myself, Jalil Alibaba. Uh, We've got tons to talk about in that pregame show. Elliot Panico, Nashville goalkeeper, able to sit down with him earlier this week. Uh, Jake Zivin of Apple TV will join us. Lucas Panzica, a star-studded pregame festivity. Um, And uh, I think, certainly, Nashville's got a shot to win this thing. Uh, certainly. So it's going to be a, a very fun night tomorrow, just south of downtown Nashville at Geodis Park. Elsewhere, though, Tennessee Titans are back at it. 820 mm-hmm. on Fridays is when we talk with voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, who joins us coming up next with Will Levis's status up in the air for tomorrow. What does Malik Willis need to show in his added opportunity at the helm of the Tennessee Titans offense? That's next with Mike Keith on RKW.
Friday morning continues on Ramon, Kayla, and Will, powered by all four seasons garage doors. Ramon Foster on his way to Minnesota. He'll be a part of Titans radio coverage of Titans and Vikings tomorrow in preseason game number two. I'm Will Bowling, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer. As we're joined now by voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, every Friday right here at 820 on the show. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. Excuse me. So uh, first and foremost, Mike, we got to start with the important questions. Just how much did Ramon Foster crush it in his uh, debut with you guys over last weekend? Since he's not there, I'll say it. He was pretty doggone good. <laughs> I don't want to let him get to, you know, the, the swollen head or anything. <laughs> so, when you know, we're not telling him that. We're sort of keeping him in the dark on, on how he did, but he was really good. And, you know, just what we – what we were excited to hear and what we thought he would bring, he brought, and that's, you know, his, his former player part of it and having been on those sidelines before and having an understanding of what's going on in the preseason in a different way. And so, yeah, we were, we were really excited by, by what he brought and look forward to having him chime in tomorrow night uh, inside U.S. Bank Stadium. Mike, uh, with uh, Will Levis' status up in the air, according to Mike Vrabel yesterday uh, for Saturday, what does Malik Willis need to show with a potential bigger opportunity as uh, maybe the the only quarterback we'll see, uh, but just with this opportunity tomorrow? Well, it's a good question for the, from the standpoint that I think Malik has got a, a big opportunity anyway uh, to kind of build on some of the good and maybe try to erase some of the bad from the performance in Chicago. And he's had up and down moments on the practice field here in Minnesota as well. So I, I think for Malik, what it comes down to is showing consistency, showing the ability to make good decisions and to get the ball out on time. And he may have more of a chance to do that with obviously players going in and out around him which makes it really difficult because, I mean, you, you go in and you, you have your first possession with the number one offensive line, and it looks quite different than when you get the backup offensive line, and then it looks very different uh, when you get guys who probably aren't going to make the team in there blocking for you, receivers, some of whom are not going to make the team running routes for you. It's, it's up to you to show the consistency because the coaches know – when they grade the tape afterwards, they know the mistakes that the other players have potentially made that, that, well, we probably don't, you know, that's the part of it that is hard for us in terms of analyzing is we don't know when a receiver goes the wrong way or cuts a route or when the blocking scheme isn't proper, but they still grade the quarterbacks on how they're carrying out their responsibility. And so I mean, this would obviously be a long exam for Malik Willis if he has to go all the way. Uh, I was on 3HL yesterday, and that you know they were asking about the playing time and and the potential issue. I don't know what the Titans are going to do with Ryan Tannehill. I don't know if he'll play at all, but whatever it is with the Will Levis situation, Ryan Tannehill's not affected. So if Tannehill was going to play a series, he'll still just play a series. And if he wasn't going to play at all, he's still not going to play at all. So, you know, the, the big thing is Willis potentially could get the whole game. Mm. And, and if that happens, it's an unbelievable opportunity for him to take a step forward. It's also, you know, just being honest, it's, it's also a, a place where there are potentially a lot of pitfalls for him because – as I mentioned, things going on around him might be out of his control. And that that's what they've wanted to see more from him, Will, is they've wanted to see him play quarterback more. And he has really done that well. Uh, the improvement in him playing quarterback in and out of the huddle, making sure he has all the operational things done, calling the plays, you know, thinking about the different things that a quarterback has to think about, things that were done largely for him in college and, quite frankly, things that are done for 90% of the quarterbacks now in all of football. I mean, his improvement has just been vast, and this would be another situation where he would be asked a lot more in that area. Yeah, and seeing him play a full game, Mike, we don't always see that in the preseason. Usually you have – 
you know, your backups going one half or the other half or switching series like we saw last weekend in Chicago with Malik specifically is the biggest challenge um, just kind of seeing the different offensive lines in front of him, the different pieces that he's going to be throwing to just because that will be throughout a whole game. Whereas, you know, he's, he's usually running with the twos or obviously some of the three sometimes. Yeah, that's it. That's what it comes down to because how they expect him to react is the same, no matter what. And, you know, it was like, it was like up here on Wednesday, the wind was blowing 25 (laughs) miles an hour. And so you're, I mean, consistently 25 miles an hour. It was crazy. And so that makes it hard to throw the ball, but that's not, you're not graded against a curve. You still have to complete the passes the same way you still have to run the plays, the same way you still have to move the football. And that's what, that's where it is a a lot for Malik staying in the pocket, running when it's time to run, not going out of the back of the pocket like he often did last year and potentially giving up, you know, huge, huge losses because he would take a sack 14 yards down the feet, you know, behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, those, Those are the sorts of things that he has really come a long way on. And, you know, the consistency in his delivery and his mechanics, uh, his, the footballs he throws now are much more consistent than a year ago because he's improved his mechanics. This is what they liked about him last year is no matter how bad it got, and it was tough because he was clearly not ready to play. And we said this at the time, the guy really worked hard, really worked hard. And when he was demoted before the last two games in favor of Josh Dobbs, he handled that really, really like a pro. And people were impressed. So I, I've said all along, the thing about Malik is he gives himself a really good chance. He's going to give himself the best chance to be successful because of the time that he puts in. Now, we don't know if he can do it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we continue to watch. The jury's still out on that. But anybody who operates in a space like a professional who handles himself in the NFL like a professional gives himself that opportunity for improvement because the people working with you are pulling for you and they're going to give you opportunities and they're going to take the time with you. They, they weren't going to write him off quickly because of these things that they were seeing that the public couldn't see. Now the public is having a chance to see some of these things. You can probably tell I'm a Malik Willis fan. Yeah. I'm a I'm a fan of what he does because I, I've I've seen both over the years. I've seen the guys come in and they just sort of, you know, they're living off the, the high school talent and I've always been the best player. And when it doesn't go right, they basically just quit. Mm-hmm. Because they, they don't know how to work. This guy fine. And that it's exciting to see him reap the rewards of the success from what he's putting into it. Again, this is not, I mean, we don't know. We don't know where he's going to end up in this journey, but he is certainly giving himself the best opportunity. Yeah, I agree, Mike. And it was such a positive attitude every time he's out there. Um, Just you've got to love that as a coach. When you look at joint practices over the last two days, Mike, and Coach Mack mentioned this to us, it's like you're going to a carnival, right? You can't ride a a whole bunch of rides at once. You've got to, like, split things up. So he watched, you know, some of the offense one day, some of the defense. For you, when you watched this defense over the last two days, what stood out to you the most, Mike, just building off of what we've seen in practices here in Nashville? The physicality and the confidence. I think everybody up here, and if you read the media who watched the Titans' defense, and this is good media up here. They know football, and I I enjoy uh, reading and and watching the things they do up here because I think they're very level-headed. It's it's not a lot of uh, hot take style. It's people who know football, and, you know, they were impressed with the physicality. And, And I think everybody can see that this group has a physical edge to them on defense that stands out. And they, they play with a tremendous amount of confidence as well. 
Uh, they're very competitive. Uh, even when they lose reps, mm -hmm. it's it's not because they're not bringing it. I, I think this defense, and I've said it all off season, and I, I continue to believe it even more. We're we're four weeks into training camp now. I, I believe it even more now. This group has a chance to be special. And over the years, when the Titans have had special defenses, they they have ended up being teams that have been better than what they were predicted to be because the offense can sort of grow into whatever their role is because they know the defense is there. And I, I think this defense, in particular with their physicality, is going to have a chance to make some big plays and is going to make it very hard on opposing offenses, which is what they've done the last two weeks, or the last two days, I should say, uh, up here in Egan, Minnesota. Voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, our guest here on Ramon, Kale, and Will. And the physicality as well in the secondary, Mike, um, something that is a talking point. And, and for one guy specifically, going up against a, a fellow LSU Tiger uh, and Christian Fulton, uh, uh, certainly for good reason. A lot of eyes were on him this week. Fair to say he rose to the challenge of of covering Justin Jefferson? I think it's totally fair. I mean, Mark Craig wrote in the Star Tribune up here that Justin Jefferson made a lot of big plays, but he called Christian Fulton's coverage of him admirable. Um, and, and I think that's what tells the story. In a lot of situations where the receiver has an advantage in seven-on-seven seven because there's no pass rush, and even in some situations where plays would have been blown dead due to sacks, uh, Jefferson caught passes. And then guess what? There are other plays where Jefferson caught passes because he's awesome. Um, so, I mean, that does happen. And yet there was Fulton uh, competing, battling, uh, being in the right spots, made a great interception in a drill here yesterday, uh, just just continuing to do what he has done in this camp, and that is elevate his game. He understands. He's in a contract year. More is expected of him. Uh, he was kind of called out by the head coach at the end of the season. Um, you know, th these are things that have happened uh, that have certainly been um, – that have certainly been interesting. And he under he gets it, and he has risen to the challenge. Mike, interested to watch Josh Wiley compete again in a second preseason game, and and talking about guys that have had good moments and maybe some tough moments early on. By all accounts, a guy that's responded really well um, since that first game in Chicago. What specifically have you seen from him as he gets more practices under his belt and starts to feel a bit more comfortable? I think the comfort is what you see. I think you said it well. Um, Josh has had two really good days up here, has made a bunch of plays. And it's, it's almost as if the, the, the part of it that stands out to me is if you, if you played baseball as a kid and you played Dixie Youth Baseball, which a lot of us in the region did, when you would go from the 11 and 12 to the 13 and 14s, everything changed because suddenly you could balk. Suddenly there were all kinds of different – the mound was further back. All these different rules took place, and your first game was normally kind of a disaster because none of those things sort of had – they had told you all of these things, but you hadn't experienced them. Some of that felt like what happened to Josh Wiley in Chicago. He had practiced. They had told him what it would be like. They told him how the game speed would go, yada, yada, yada. And yet, when he got out there, it was a little bit different. And I think he told me in an interview uh, for Titans Camp Rewind, which is on our YouTube channel this morning, the Titans YouTube channel, he, he admitted, he goes, yeah, it was kind of, you know, getting out there. He said, it was fun, but it, it kind of got him. And so... And we've seen this over the years. A lot of guys, that first experience gets their attention, and then they go, oh, okay, this is what it really feels like. This is how fast it moves. This is how guys come at you. And he's responded. I, I would expect uh, that he will play well tomorrow night and that Titans fans will continue to see the growth in number 81 and we'll understand why people were so excited about him in the mini camps 
or the, uh, the OTAs and the mini camp and, and what he brings. And I think you'll start to see more of this, but he had a welcome to the NFL moment, just like a lot of us had when we went to the, when we became 13 <laughs> year olds and moved up in baseball, he had that welcome to the NFL moment um, that where it all changed, where everything was different. And, he he had a big smile on his face. He goes, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Voice the Titans, Mike Keith, joining us this morning. Six o'clock, Titans radio pregame coverage, local coverage here in the zone at four for Titans and Vikings tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to listening again, Mike. Thank you as always. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. There's Voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, with us this morning here on RKW. And one statement he made that I want to react to coming up next, uh, a good one. For Titans fans, uh, after this on 104.5 The Zone.
We're rolling right along on a Friday morning with Robert Walsh, our producer, Kayla Anderson. I'm Will Bowling. Ramon Foster on his way to Minnesota to join Titans radio coverage tomorrow night for Titans and Vikings. Kayla making her pregame debut as well. Yeah. The company countdown to kickoff. Looking forward to listening to you guys. Should be fun. Yeah, home and away this this year will be a, a four-person crew. We got Mickey, Ryan, we've got Buck Rising, Blaine Bishop, and then I'm uh, going to be on the, the uh, pregame show as well this year. Love it. It'll be fun. Looking forward to that. It mm. is uh, interesting when you do these preseason games and doing Titans talk back last season. <laughs> like, there is almost more to talk about sometimes in – the preseason broadcasts as much as anything else. Sure. Like, like there, there are just so many more players and more discussions you can get into about the roster and some of these things. Because there's so many guys battling for a spot. Yeah. And nowadays, they don't cut those guys until the very end. Where in training camps uh, as of late, or in the past, I should say, they would whittle down that roster. Right the less storylines you have, right? So you're right, Will. There's still plenty more to talk to about, especially going into this game with Will Levis up in the air and so on and so forth. So, Is there a guy that you guys are looking forward to watching in uh, preseason this week? Like, I know you asked Mike Keith about this, for, but for me it's it's Josh Wiley. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he, he right. was kind of despondent after the game with his play. So I, I'd like to see if he could rebound and get a little, more, uh, a little more play in the game as it goes on. But is there a guy for you that sticks out? Kayla? Yeah, so I'm going to go with a, a couple of the wide receivers now with Traylon Burks obviously not playing at sure. all. Um, and just more reps you've got to see from these guys that might be expected to, um, you know, step up. It, I would say uh, Treshawn Harrison. I think I'm still interested in him. Maybe that's the Pac-12 girl in me, but he's he's done stuff throughout camp. Can he do more, though? Because you've also... Got um, the kid out of Georgia. I just went drew a blank. Kyrus Jackson. Jackson, who has been in my eyes pretty consistent throughout camp. So some of those fringe guys, I'm interested in watching. You know, as they continue to try to battle for a spot. It's all about Malik Willis for me, yeah. honestly. At this point, I think the injury for Will Levis. It's the easy answer, but I think this time it is the answer. Mm -hmm. When it comes to just the way this offense is run, can Malik Willis raise the level of the guys around him and make this offense run as smoothly as it did when the first team offensive line was on the field in Chicago? Uh, the accuracy has got to be a bit better, but I just think managing the offense, the pre-snap penalties, the delay of game he takes on drive number one, this could be the defining moment of Malik Willis's Tennessee Titans career should he play the entire game, Yeah, which I think is likely. At this point, Mike Keith telling us that uh, he doesn't know, obviously, what Ryan Tannehill's status is for tomorrow, but he doesn't think it will be affected by Will Levis. Uh, that wasn't the quote, though, I wanted to get into with Mike. The, the specific thing that I think is so interesting that he had to say that I'm starting to come around on myself is um, his words about this Titans defense has a chance to be special. And when Titans teams have special defenses, they end up being better than they're expected to be. That was his voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, with us just a few minutes ago. I don't think Titans fans should be scared of having very high expectations for this defense. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that if this defense avoids that disastrous injury to a Kevin Byard, Jeffrey Simmons, and I'll even throw Christian Fulton in there too. If you can keep your superstar defenders healthy, this should be a top 10 defense in the NFL. Yeah, I would agree with you, Will. And since I've been here, it has been a pretty, for the most part, solid defense. Now, there was the year that Mike Vrabel was kind of acting as Mr. Everything because Shane Bowen did not officially get the title of defensive coordinator, and that was a down year for the defense, and they knew it. But when Shane Bowen officially got that title and those guys, including the leader, one of the leaders, Kevin Byard, took it upon themselves, they were embarrassed with that performance that season and to come back last year and to have the type of season they did while still dealing with injuries, including big Jeff who played a lot, but was not a hundred percent with the back end dealing with some injuries as well. Obviously not having Harold Landry, they still held it together. So to know that they've added pieces this year and that they have taken it upon themselves 
throughout the entire camp, not just to be happy one day with what they did, sure. but to build upon that. And from, according to Mike, at least build upon that even more in joint practices going up against another team for the first time. I think that that is really encouraging news. And you're right. If they can stay healthy, that's the main part. But they've also looked to add some depth pieces, which I like, some new coaches. It could be a top 10 defense. I Actually, I expect them to be a top 10 defense at this point. I think you have to. With a defensive coach like Mike Vrabel also, this needs to be what the Titans major in. Ultimately, if the Titans are not a top 10 defense, it comes down to two things for me. The offense not being good enough on third downs and putting them in difficult situations where offense can't stay on the field long enough and the defense is just out there for forever. I think it's fair to say that happened at times last season. Yeah. Or be the injuries. Barring those two things, the offense just can't be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And this team is going to be fine. I mean, ultimately, this team should have playoff expectations if they just stay healthy. And, And again, we say all of these things, guys, and... The last two seasons, they just haven't been healthy. Yeah. And and we find out this season how, how much of that is luck and how much of that is Mike Vrabel's willingness or lack thereof to adapt. And as much as people might be worried about the offensive line still just because of that right tackle position and it's been kind of an ongoing situation, it looks like for the most part Chris Hubbard will will probably win that starting job. But According to everything we see in practice, what we've heard about them continuing to find the chemistry between them, which is one of the biggest things Ramon Foster will tell you, um, it looks like they'll come into their own. And there's plenty of other teams out there, guys, including the New York Jets, including the Miami Dolphins, who you're hearing reports about their offensive line, too. Like, they might have quarterbacks that they love, but they're still having issues with their lines early on in training camp and getting to be that way. So I don't think that everybody should be alarmed by, oh, this offensive line is still so unknown. Yes, parts of it is, but I think they are growing day by day in a positive way. 615-737-1045 is our number if you want to join us. Uh, Coming up in hour number four, Jaleel Alibaba, Nashville SC radio broadcast. He'll join us at 920. Sammy Kincaid will join us at the end of the show as we talk a little high school football, recapping the beginning of week one last night, looking ahead to where she'll be tonight, uh, our game of the week as well, and a Saturday game as well that is of particular interest, not only to middle Tennesseans, but also uh, to Tennessee fans, Mm -hmm. potentially. Uh, We'll get to that coming up as well. NFL headlines and a wide receiver who's available, though. Uh, That's the topic of conversation coming up next.
What's going on? Nine o'clock on the dot. We've done that twice today. Good job by Will on the time. And from the 104.5 The Zone Studios, I'm Robert Walsh. A mysterious injury was sustained by Will Levis at practice and is only being described as a lower body injury. That leaves Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis as the only quarterbacks on the roster for the Titans. So Willis could see extended playing time versus the Vikings. we got local uh, coverage for that with a Lee Company countdown to kickoff starting at 4 o'clock. Titans Radio takes it from there at 6 and kickoff at 7 o'clock. Also, big weekend in Nashville as Nashville SC takes on Miami pregame for that starting at 7, game time at 8. And if you'd like to listen to that, all you got to do is download the 104.5 The Zone app. You can listen to the pregame there. You can listen to the Nashville SC game there. Will Bowling, Jalil Anibaba on the call there. So that'll be a lot of fun. Jalil Anibaba joins the show at 9.20. Also, a wide receiver coming available that could be of interest to the Titans in Denzel Mims, who has been waived by the line with an injury designation. Apparently he had a calf injury and now he is in rehab. He had an impressive camp and could be an interesting addition when he is healthy. Somebody to keep an eye on for the Titans. We had preseason action last night in a tie. Yay! Eagles 18, Browns 18. Love a tie. Love a tie. You got preseason games tonight as well. Panthers and Giants start the night off at 6 p.m. and then half an hour later you get Bengals and the Falcons kicking off at 6.30. For all your foundation, prayer, and, and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5. the zone. Nine o'clock in Nashville, Tennessee, and a big weekend begins right here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors. With trust matters, count on all four seasons garage doors in Nashville. Professional garage door installation and repair from a locally owned and family run business. Visit all four seasons garages.com slash Nashville with Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh behind the glass, remote foster on his way to Minnesota. He will be back with us on Monday. I will bowling match day Eve for Nashville SC. We'll talk about Miami versus Nashville with Jalil Alibaba club ambassador and color commentator for us as we broadcast tomorrow. 7 o'clock pregame, 8 o'clock kick between Messi and Music City on the 104.5 The Zone app. Looking forward to that. 4 o'clock, Lee Company countdown to kickoff coverage for Titans and Vikings tomorrow. Titans Radio at 6. And that one going to be fun as well. Mm-hmm. Lots to discuss for 60 more minutes. Uh, Sammy Kincaid will join us to talk some high school football as well as uh, the Titans have an easy day today and uh, back at it again tomorrow. Yeah, I spoke to Ramon about this in the break before he left. I said, it's kind of different when usually those Fridays that you have away games, you're traveling. So most of it is spent preparing and then traveling and then getting there and getting settled in. Today, it's a little nice, you know, break for them, I guess. And I know they're still going to be doing some some things as a team. But just to kind of take your deep breath after two really intense days of joint practice work. Yeah for them to get ready for this, for these younger guys to get ready. I'm sure they'll have some team stuff that they'll do, but kind of nice, and you don't usually get that this time of year. Certainly. Certainly. So uh, it will be interesting to see which Titans team comes out there tomorrow uh, as they take on Minnesota. Will Levis uh, leaving with what was reported as a lower body injury. That was reported by Paul Kaharski yesterday uh, up in Minneapolis. Uh, Best play of the day for the Titans on defense A one-handed interception by Christian Fulton. That came on a Kirk Cousins pass intended for Vikings tight end Josh Oliver. Uh, So some good, some bad, Kayla. And I think specifically the defense felt like um, they kicked Minnesota around a little bit. I think they did. I mean, we, we clearly don't voice as many things about what Minnesota did. But coming from the reporters that are representing the, you know, Titans media that are up there, all accounts are that the defense did really put a number on them and specifically with Christian Fulton you had mentioned 
just going up against what we think, at least I do, and I think you agree with me, is the best receiver in the league right now in Justin Jefferson. Right. And I love the familiarity between the two at LSU, but I think it's just a good continued um, type of momentum that Christian Fulton can build off of. I know yesterday he said, I want that interception to trend. And I thought that was cool, considering that Christian Fulton is a little more quiet of a guy. For a cornerback, you get a little more loud, guys. They'd like to talk out there on the field a lot. Christian hasn't really been that guy necessarily here in Nashville, but I love kind of seeing that growth too of being a little more boisterous and being a little more confident. I think that's really going to play over well in the season if he can stay healthy. Ian Rappaport of NFL Network and NFL.com reports this morning that the Lions are waving injured wide receiver Denzel Mims after a practice ankle injury led to a calf injury in rehab. Uh, a source tells him, Rappaport adding that Mims had impressed in camp and could be an interesting addition when healthy. Uh, could be an interesting addition to the Tennessee Titans, yeah. who are, I think, always in the market for wide receivers. Um, do you think the Titans would be open to adding another body into a room that's already a little crowded at this point? I think so. I mean, like you said, you never could have enough depth. And if you have a talent that's out there, you might as well try to grab him. And if you aren't familiar with Denzel Mims, um, second round pick by the New York Jets in 2020, he's a product of Baylor. Um, still pretty young, 25 years old. And just I just don't think has had a real solid time to put out what he was supposed to be, right? I mean, he's kind of hopped around a little bit at this point. Um, but yeah, so I would say that why not pick him up to have some depth? You don't know when Traylon Burks is coming back. Hopefully it's only three weeks. Right. But give him give this guy a chance if he fits what you want to do, of course. When you look at their the breakdown of their wide receivers, if they are keeping six, he would be stealing a spot from either Racy McMath, Colton yeah. Dow. Would you rather have Mims than one of those guys, knowing that Mims doesn't do a lot on special teams? Right. True. I think that's the difficult thing at this point. I mean, the guy maybe would have been more of a John Robinson wide receiver at 6'3", 207. It, it feels like maybe the 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 ship has sailed to get these just big physical freaks who just happen to fall into your lap. I, I think mm-hmm. if Denzel Mims is a Tennessee Titan, it's on the practice squad. Yeah. Meaning that he clears through everybody else as well. But it would be interesting. I mean, he's a guy that, as a rookie in 2020, played nine games and had 357 yards, 133 yards in 2021, 186 yards in 2022. He's never played a full season of uh, 16 games, obviously, when it was 16 or or 17 since then. It's just interesting, guys, because I feel like we had the conversation yesterday about Nick Mm Westbrook-Akine. Nick Westbrook-Akine has better numbers than Denzel Mims, yet... The <laughs> Titans fan that is clamoring for Denzel Mims is probably, uh, I'm maybe hypothesizing here, willing to get rid of NWI to do it. Like, it feels like these physical freaks who just put up big numbers in college. And yeah, he's a second-round pick, right? The potential's got to be there. Somebody had to believe in him at that point in order to pick him in the second round. But a, a guy like that's just not going to bump somebody off the roster who this team trusts. And if Denzel Mims makes the 53-man roster in Tennessee, which I I don't expect to happen, the guy just got released, obviously, too, it it would mean it's a seventh wide receiver. Because those guys you're mentioning, I don't think are going to be casualties for someone who's Mm -hmm. not currently in that room. That's not the way Mike Vrabel works, and it doesn't seem to be the case for Rand Carthon either, who has been on record many times saying, I'm here to get Mike Vrabel the best players. Is... Denzel Mims, one of the best players right now? No, not necessarily. Is he a guy who still has potential that someone can get that out of him if he can stay healthy? Sure. Um, I agree. If he does come to the team and if he's available for some reason where you could pick him up and add him to the practice squad just for the depth purposes, I'm not saying he's going to beat out any of these current wide receivers who put in the work with the team. I'm not even saying he's as talented as them at this point. But I always... I always look at this wide receiver room well and just like when you know you have enough depth and then just something happens like it has with the titans every single season 
The wide receiver room is just one of those rooms that continues to get hit. Um, if you could pick him up, put him on the practice squad, add some depth, have at it. But it's not the worst thing for him just to be left out there, right? 615-737-1045, our number uh, yesterday, Malik Willis, 6 of 12 and 7 on 7 in team periods combined, according to Jim Wyatt of TennesseeTitans.com, uh, was intercepted by uh, Vikings corner Andrew Booth in the end zone at the end of his two-minute drive opportunity. Uh, then Booth celebrated by throwing the ball at the Titans sideline, which was uh, a part of some of the... Uh, fracases that were going on yesterday in Minneapolis. Uh, Willis then completed a bomb to Chris Moore. That was called back from a penalty that Jim Wyatt writes was a mystery penalty, uh, which was not taken well by the Titans sideline either. But Malik went 13 of 14 on Wednesday. Wasn't quite as good yesterday. Uh, going 6 of 12, 19 of 26 combined with that interception. Of course, Levis uh, only 3 of 5 in his uh, team periods. Mike Vrabel mentioning after practice that the plan was to get him more play yesterday. Obviously, that's not the case, considering he went down with an injury. And uh, not down, I should say, went out with mm-hmm. an injury and did not return uh, late in practice. And we're still not exactly sure what's going on. Um, I think Paul Kaharski reported a lower body injury, yeah. which is usually a hockey term um, where you don't right. get much detail on that. But... It could be something a little less, you know, tra- dramatic than we all are thinking, or it could be something that is more significant that we could see him miss time for. So we're all just keeping our powder dry, as Coach Max says right now, waiting for what could happen. But I, pr- I personally don't think we'll probably see him Saturday. I agree. It's got to make you feel good, though, that they didn't use the buzzword. Of, well, obviously, you would have seen the cart come out. But it feels like that's the new sensational term this offseason. It's like, oh, the cart's coming out. The <laughs> right. cart came out yesterday for Teron Armstead. He was fine. The cart came back out for Justin Ross. He was fine. Like it, it, like you talked about yesterday, Will. It's just a precaution. But mm-hmm. you've got to feel a little bit better that the cart did not come out for Levis. In fact, he disappeared into a void, <laughs> and no one saw him leave. Uh, this was volunteered to us, so it, it's got to install just a little bit of confidence uh, for the long term. Coming up next, Jaleel Baba joins us, Nashville SC club ambassador and radio color commentator who will join me on the broadcast call tomorrow night as Nashville hosts Lionel Messi and enter Miami. What fans of all intelligence levels of soccer can expect? Something for the 100 level and maybe something a little bit deeper as well into the flaws of Inter-Miami and the way Nashville could look to beat them tomorrow night. That's coming up next as we continue in Hour 4 on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson with Window Nation, and we continue to battle these heat, uh, hot, I should say, humid temperatures. We're hoping for some relief soon, but as of right now, you're probably still continuing to crank up that AC, and that is going to lead to sky-high energy bills. And as always, we talk about this, the solution, well, new windows from our friends at Window Nation. You can save thousands today with no money down, no payments, and no interest for two full years. Uh, 50% off any style of windows. Added that, another 10% off. And those those style of windows, they have a mo- all. They have bows, they have bows, they have double hung. Any style, you can protect and increase the style and the value of your home today by simply calling 866-90-NATION. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know if my windows need to be replaced? Well, maybe you're seeing some structural damage to them. Condensation, when you wake up early in the morning or late at night, maybe they're leaking. That probably means you need new windows from our friends at Window Nation. And don't just leave us to tell you that. You can look at the 10,000 online positive reviews to justify that as well. They've installed over 200 windows just last year. Pretty impressive. So go ahead and check out our friends from Window Nations. You can just simply call them at 866-90-NATION or go online to windownation.com.
It's Ramon, Kayla, and Will, powered by All Four Seasons Garage Doors, right here on 104.5 The Zone with Kayla Anderson. I'm Will Bowling. Robert Walsh spinning the hits. A little Post Malone for your Friday morning. No Ramon Foster this morning for the second half of the show. He is on his way to Minneapolis. And joining us on the phone lines, the man who will join me on the call tomorrow night. You heard him earlier this week with Lucas Panzica. These guys crushed it when Nashville SC beat Monterey, the League's Cup final tomorrow at Geodis Park. Uh, Jaleel, it is fitting that we begin our conversation this morning with a little Post Malone, like we will begin our, our broadcast prep tomorrow. How are you? There, there's no other way to start a show. There's no other way to start anything. And the boys and goal will be on overdrive tomorrow night. <laughs> I love it. You've been hanging out with me way too long if you're making corny jokes like that. Um <laughs> Jaleel, man, just uh, where is uh, your head at going into this game tomorrow? There are so many storylines when you look at Nashville and Miami coming into MLS the same year. Obviously, Lionel Messi and this team that has scored in the first 15 minutes of all five of his starts, the team that's last in MLS yet has been outstanding over these games in League's Cup. Where does the conversation begin for you when you look from a broad perspective at tomorrow night's matchup? I think it's it's one word, championship. Um, that's what it's all about. I think, uh, you know, if you look at the greatest teams in sports history, they have to, to earn their stripes to even have the ability to be playing for a championship. If you look at the Bulls, you look at the Warriors, you look at any team that, you know, is revered as the most successful in their given endeavor, they've had to, to go through the growing pains. And I think the boys in gold have – have gone through a, a fair share in their their early history. I was part of some of the the darker exits um, in playoffs and whatnot, and I think those times have have helped them get to to where they are now. And it's a just a great moment for the city. So first of all, great to talk to you because I hear so much good things and obviously <laughs> listen to your guys' call um, every single time the Nashville SC the boys in gold play. But this has probably got to be one of the biggest calls that you're looking forward to, I would, I would guess with just all eyes on Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously I think, uh, you know, this is, this is the biggest moment for, for a lot of people that are involved in, in their respective careers, the players, of course, for, for Gary Smith and the coaching staff, for sure. Um, there's, there's definitely a, a, a historic feel to it. Um, and, and yeah, I think I'm just honored to to be able to to tell the story because I've been part of it um, for so many ways um, from the beginning, and and I think it's just all about bringing bringing the moment justice and and hoping the best for for a spectacle of a night. What do you expect from this group, from the supporters, with a team? That is being led right now by an international superstar and Lionel Messi. Just the type of environment that you expect, because it is a little different, right? You you've got him; he's a superstar, and then you've got the home team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, what I try to do as a broadcaster is I try not to go into things with with expectations whatsoever. I try to just keep my 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 eyes really open and, and my, my mind and my heart open as well. So that way I'm actually just speaking to what's happening. Mm -hmm. I try not to really close myself down too narrow in terms of storylines or, or what I think I should be telling the, the audience that they should be looking or listening for. And I try to just do each and every moment justice um, in that way. So hopefully that that helps to to just do whatever happens tomorrow night justice. Jalil Alibaba with us this morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will, color commentator for Nashville SC on the radio side. Uh, Jaleel, much of the conversation is going to be about Lionel Messi nationally and, and even locally and the spectacle that he is. But this Nashville SC team has had really a magical last month uh, here in League's Cup, and specifically the addition of Sam Surridge. Uh, for those unfamiliar with him, um, the guy has scored three goals and three halves of play so far for Nashville SC and Jaleel, I know we've talked about it a lot, but for all the conversation and rightfully so about the instant impact Lionel Messi has made, Sam Surridge has come in and has made a massive impact, including, uh, uh the first goal, uh, on Tuesday night and that went over Monterey for Nashville. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, what's what's most important to understand about Sam Search landing here in Nashville is that it's uh, been been a long time coming in, in so many ways. I think any successful soccer team has a a goal score and a and in our league in MLS, it's most likely going to be a DP, a designated player, number nine. Um, and and that's something that this this team hasn't seen since CJ Sapong 2021, really. So Sam Surge coming into not only into form so quickly, but most importantly for me, the fact that that he has developed an, an instant uh, easy make partnership with Hani Mukhtar, if you will, I think that that really bodes for, for a promising future and a very near future for, for Nashville and Gary Smith and the rest of, of uh, the club. So Jaleel, for, for this Miami team, we, we talk a lot about the strengths, what Lionel Messi, Sergio Busquets, Jordi Alba bring to the side. What are some of the flaws? Where does Nashville try to expose something in this Miami team that has only scored 22 goals in 22 MLS matches this season, yet has scored 21 goals in six games in this League's Cup tournament? Yeah, I think uh, from a from a tactical standpoint, being able to to attack down the flanks and to try to be able to to exploit them in transition, I think that's probably your your best bet as far as through through the run of play, and then and then set pieces as well, corner kicks, free kicks from from wide areas. Uh, I think Nashville has done a, an excellent job through their through their run to the finals to to be very good in those two areas um and if you know gary smith's style those are those are two things on the attacking side that that all players very well know and understand how how to exploit but for me when you're talking about flaws in a given team or whatever have you i think they can be null and void when when messi's on the team i think or when Messi's on the field i think what's most important in this match is who takes their chances, and who is able to really protect the lead when they have it. Being a former player, and this is just a, a question that just pops into my head, because you have intimidation factor with somebody that's such a, a I guess, has turned the sport into what it is, right? He's been such a big name in the sport for such a long time. And in Messi, in that case, you look at him joining this Miami team. He's scored a goal in every game since he's joined Inter-Miami. Inter How much does he bring, like, an intimidation factor when you're playing against him, just knowing that he plays for that other team? I think that intimidation factor is the key to this matchup. Wow. For me, I think... If Nashville is able to compartmentalize that and put that to the side, they have every chance in the world to win this final. I think if they if they succumb to that intimidation factor, it's curtains. But I I don't see a situation where where you see Nashville come out in this match similarly to Philly did, um, where you could see it was very it was it was visible and it was also palpable that the intimidation factor completely overwhelmed uh Philly but I think we're going to see a much more even match and I think this one is going to come down to the wire and like I said I I, I anticipate and, and hope for a spectacle of a night going to be fun seven o'clock pregame coverage eight o'clock the kick you can hear it on the 104.5 the zone app with that man Jalil Anibaba and myself uh, tomorrow. Jalil, I cannot wait. We are excited. Uh, it's going to be a crazy night at Geodis Park, and I uh, appreciate you giving us a couple minutes to talk about it. Anytime. It's lit. My pleasure, and uh, you guys have an amazing rest of the show. You too, Jalil. Yes, sir. There's Jalil Anibaba with us this morning here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will on a uh, very busy week and mm. couple of days for the club. That was fun. Yep, that is a uh, uh, man. Been it, it's just crazy the the amount of directions you can go with this, and, and we got into it with Jaleel. But uh, just looking at the word for word, finding my notes here. Yeah. Uh, on that last quote, I, I think is the story. Yep. He said the intimidation factor of Messi is the key to the match. If Nashville gets beyond that, they have every chance to win. Absolutely. And I asked you that earlier in the show when we were just going back and forth about this upcoming match. You had said that Philly pretty much changed their game plan. They got out of their own identity as a club and how they played to 
kind of maneuver around Messi and that intimidation factor that comes along with it, right? They they thought they needed to play a different type of game and it didn't do him justice. Right. And so him and Jaleel just kind of confirming that that is the key. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's going to be crazy. And I think from that perspective, it speaks to a larger point just in sports of where is the line between adjusting to an opponent yet having a clear identity in who you are. And... To be quite honest, that's something that Nashville sports teams have always had for for the successes, for the failures of the Titans, of the Nashville Predators, of Nashville SC. I think we could all say that when you think of Titans football, you have a very clear sense of what that has been in their entire history, right? Mm-hmm. Run the football, play good defense, hit a guy in the face, knock their teeth out, grind it out, grimy football. Nashville Predators have almost been the hockey equivalent of that. Right. Stingy defensively, really good goaltending, entertaining, fast-paced, and grinded out mentality. Nashville SC has taken almost the completely identical approach in the soccer side of things. Mike Jacobs, the general manager, New Yorker. Got a lot of New Yorkers in the team. Dax McCarty, who uh, played his soccer at North Carolina. Sorry, Robert, uh, as did Jaleel (laughs) Baba. And, uh, you know, he comes from New York Red Bulls. And Sean Davis is a New Jersey guy. And Fafa Pico from uh, New York, he scored uh, uh, that crazy goal uh, on Tuesday against Monterey. You've got Alex Muehl, who comes from the New York Red Bulls Academy. Like, there's that get it done, grind it out, play very solid defense. But the evolution of Nashville SC this year, the attack has been terrific. And Sam Surridge, three goals and three halves, has been... Uh, a revelation for this team. Well, it will, uh, remains to be seen what his role is tomorrow, but um, I think you certainly expect that this Nashville SC team is going to play with a lot of confidence at home and bank on the fact that the energy in that building is going to really work in their favor uh, to play that style of soccer uh, against Inter Miami. And they should have the confidence, you know, in whoever's coming into their house because it's their house, right? right. I mean, that that is their stadium. They play really well there. You're going to have a home crowd. Yes, mixed in with some messy fans, but why not relish the opportunity? And this is Will also winning something like this and just being able to get to this point. They've now qualified for other things. Yeah, right. Um, which is huge for this uh, club. Yeah, they're in the CONCACAF Champions Cup that will be played in 2024. That takes uh, the winners of all of the... North American leagues and puts them together. So essentially you've got Caribbean islands, you've got uh, Central America that is included in that along with Mexico, uh, the Canadian champion, even though that is an MLS team. Um, uh, And then uh, also other sides in that Uh, with a win tomorrow, Nashville would officially advance to the round of 16 of that tournament. So they are in the tournament, Yep. uh, but the bonus money is substantial. Gary Smith has spoken about that a lot. Uh, leading up to tomorrow night's match. And then you've got the element of you're through to the knockout round of the Champions Cup should you win tonight. Now, the question all the the debaucherous heathens and I would (laughs) like to know, because I've been trying to find this everywhere. I cannot find a number on it. I need what Sam Surridge is to score a goal. I found (laughs) Hani. Hani is plus 135. Mm. Uh, Messi is like minus 200. I don't know if that's because of where people are placing their money at and that's forcing it to go there. But I am trying to find the Sam Surridge odds so I can put some cheddar on this. My dude's three for three. He's about to be four for four. And I'm trying to help y'all make the bank. So where can I find this bet at? I don't know if contractually I could even comment on this. (laughs) Do not comment. Don't don't mess your money up. You want to look up uh, (laughs) what the leads go? Oh, my goodness. I I can't find it nowhere. We need Ron on the show right now, right? That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Alan Bell, where are you at? With the, uh, uh, the... Upcoming odds for Sam Surridge to score tomorrow. I don't even can I even say those words. I don't. I know, right? (laughs) Robert trying to put me in jail before I uh, trying to put me in uh, the NFL gambling jail before I do a game. Obviously, I'm not betting on the game, but uh, that is uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, Uh, John is in Nashville. Up next on the phone line six one five seven three seven one zero four five. What's up, John? Hey guys, good morning. Uh, I got two things for you. Uh, what's uh, so, uh, one thing? Let's let's beat that Zaba of Miami, okay, guys? <laughs> and then uh, and then lose this for Lucas Panzica. It's promotion for him, man. He makes a search for the Nashville SC and, and say delirium on him. 
Delirium! Just have them all sell a bunch of shirts, man. We we make a fortune off of that. Love it. That's Love it. great. John, That's awesome. you are not getting a cut of that. I'm calling my printing press man right now. <laughs> I love how the Zava, that is. I mean, if you've watched Ted Lasso, which if you haven't, I highly recommend Ted Lasso. Uh, Absolutely. He That's so like that type of an intimidator, though, right, that mm-hmm. you think of. Yeah, Zava, uh, we, we've talked about this on this show before. Uh, we did quotes of uh, who is this, Zava or Buck Rising? <laughs> In terms of self-aggrandizing figures. That was fun. Um, Zava is based off of Slatan Ibrahimovic, yeah. who played for LA Galaxy, MLS star in his own right. They casted well, Will, in that too. Yeah. Because he kind of looked like yeah. him, looked definitely like him acted like him. Right. It's a very good job with acting. Right. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I just, I literally, I think it set in two nights ago. I was sitting, just watching, I was re-watching their game against Philly. Mm-hmm. Wednesday night, and I'm just sitting there, just like this guy. I this guy's gonna be here. <laughs> and still, is just like the dude I was playing with on FIFA in FIFA 06 when I was a kid. Yeah, who was like a 16 year old then has stood the test of time and is still playing. And, and Jaleel and I have talked about this a lot because Jaleel is a messy fan. I think anyone who's a fan of soccer is a messy fan, but mm-hmm. has watched him closely through his whole career. The dude is still playing it very close to his highest level yeah. in his career at 36 years old. I mean, the guy won the World Cup last year with Argentina and is going to be the Ballon d'Or winner, which is given to the World Men's and Women's Player of the Year. Yeah. In the like he is, he is he's going to win his eighth and yeah. no one's ever won as many as he has and he's going to extend his lead on everyone else. So I got some soccer odds um to score the first goal at least. Ooh. Lionel Messi plus 190. Sam Surridge He's plus 700, folks. That's, so that's for the first goal. First that's goal the first is still goal. kind of sneaky. I Again, like that. I should probably goal. shouldn't even be saying but, uh, it. To, to save Will from <laughs> this, let's go back to a, a, a real question for Will to save his job. Uh, Thank what's you. A be- what's a better sports moment for you, seeing uh, Tennessee beat Alabama Ugh. in Neyland or getting a call this game Saturday? Mm, that's a good one. Mm. Both. That's a hard one. They're both better. I take both. I don't I, I mean, it's it, that is literally where I'm at with this. So if, in my life, there's the Braves winning a World Series. There's Tennessee beating Alabama the way they did. And not just the fact that they, I'd seen Tennessee beat Alabama before. The way that game transpired puts it right up there, too. And then there's this. I mean, Preds making the Stanley Cup final in 2017 was obviously a special moment. Mm-hmm. I think this is on par with what the Stanley Cup final was. And as far as the worldwide eyes that will be on this game, I think it's above the Stanley Cup final. This is the pinnacle of pro sports, not only in Middle Tennessee, but in the state of Tennessee. This is the highest point of pro sports in terms of worldwide interest Yeah, ever in Nashville, Tennessee. One more for you. Anytime goal scorer, Sam Surridge, plus 210. There you go, Robert. There's the anytime goal. Let's make some money, y'all. <laughs> Except for Will. Will's definitely not making <laughs> I'm money. Not, nope. Uh, Let's, For the record again, I am not involved in this whatsoever. <laughs> not involved in this whatsoever. Uh, coming up, Sammy Kincaid stops by. We'll preview a little bit of week one of high school football um, at, to the, for the people. There will be football on this radio station two straight nights. Tonight, tomorrow night, I'll give you a little preview of Alcoa and Ravenwood as well. Lots still to come as we continue for one final segment on Ramon Kayla and Will.
Wrapping up the show on a Friday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors with Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer. I'm Will Bowling. Ramon Foster on his way to Minneapolis. And we're joined by Sammy Kincaid talking a little bit of high school football, our newest 104.5 The Zone teammate. Sammy, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here this morning. I know. You've been been busy. busy. It's been a busy, busy week, but it's been a lot of fun. It's the inaugural kickoff weekend for FNR for Friday Night Rivals, and it, it's been a lot of fun. Yes, our teammate as well as uh, <laughs> Friday Night Rivals sideline reporter, um, and uh, y'all were at it last night, Mount Juliet, with the first win of the season. Yeah, and it, it came down to the wire. We were just talking about it, and it looked like Mal Juliet was going to have that one from the get-go with two fumble recoveries on those first two Cane Ridge possessions. And then in that last minute and a half of the first half, that's whenever you really kind of started to see some momentum shift, and you had the big the big penalty on defense. And, I mean, while they were making big plays, they were also having those big penalties. And so it was kind of offsetting each other, and then it came down to – 31-28 win for Mount Juliet. Now, That's yeah. incredible. Mount Juliet over Cane Ridge, the Bears, and the Ravens last night. So how in the world do you prep for three high school football <laughs> games at once? You had a game last night. You've got a game tonight when Blackman takes on Brentwood. Uh, and then you've got Brentwood Academy and CPA tomorrow night on my TV 30. Like, this is a crazy week for you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, and, and then also, like, we were just talking about closing on a house. So, that's I mean, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah, very, stuff, right? yeah you, I mean, and that's something that, like, you have so much you have to balance, and so you really just have to take it day by day. And that's what I've been doing with each of these games, trying to not get too ahead. I mean, I was just doing my prep for the CPA at Brentwood Academy game, but today's game you you got to make sure you stay focused on that so you're not getting you got a bunch of storylines that you have especially on the sidelines whenever you're trying to get those off the field stories as well as the on the field stories and you don't want to get those mixed up so today just trying to take it day by day (laughs) and about tonight's matchup like what are you looking forward to with this one specifically and I love you know as a sideline reporter it's fun because you actually get to get into some of the stories of the kids and tell them Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think one of the big things with this is even though Matt Kreisky, it's his first year at Blackman, these two coaches are very familiar with each other, with him being at Centennial before. And Centennial and Brentwood, they have a long rivalry. And so they know, each of the coaches know their style of coaching. And so while it is very common for Kreisky to want to have a strong run game, his starting running back's out. Wow. And so with Donovan Holloway being out, He's going to have to try to throw it more, execute more through the air, not just on the ground. And that's what he said their big focus is going to be tonight is making sure that they can execute that. It's like the Titans without a Derrick Henry, right? Right. No, really. It really (laughs) is. Yeah. No. And so, I mean, the identity is going to have to change, but I mean, he is an incredible head coach and you could tell he had things under control over there, but uh, that was one thing that he's saying they're going to have to be sound on. Yeah. Uh, Going to be cool. Uh, so Matt Kreisky, the head coach at Blackman, his brother Will, the head coach at Riverdale. Hmm. So we've got brothers that are coaches of the two of the major programs in Middle Tennessee high school football, uh, both in Rutherford County. Uh, Brentwood High School, uh, an interesting program with Clint Finch, the head coach there. Um, uh, one of my favorite guys to talk to in high school football, in Middle Tennessee. And uh, uh, we've got Ravenwood and Alcoa on the other side of that Battle of the Woods rivalry. But for Brentwood High School, Uh, always one of the perennial powers in Williamson County. No, whenever I was there, so I went to practices. I I actually went to Mount Juliet last week, but then I tried to break it up. So you had three schools in the Brentwood area. So I was, I went to all three of those on Monday. Nice. And Mm -hmm. whenever I went to Brentwood, it started raining. I it, They have some construction going on, and I'm walking in kind of frantic, <laughs> and I'm glad that he was the head coach that I walked in kind of frantic because right. he is so chill, just so relaxed, and it's almost as if, like, he's welcoming you into his house, sure. and he's just got such a calm demeanor about him. Uh, I, I love working with him, and he, he's absolutely fantastic, and just what he's done over there. I mean, like you said, it's one of the perennials. Absolutely. Uh, tomorrow night, Brentwood Academy and CPA. Uh, George McIntyre is the five-star quarterback for the Brentwood mm-hmm. Academy Eagles going into his junior season. New head coach Jacob Gill in his first season as head coach, taking over for Cody White, uh, who, of course, won four straight state championships, uh, one of the very few schools uh, to ever do that in the state of Tennessee. 
the other one's going to be on our station tonight. One of the other ones in Alcoa, who's won eight in a row currently uh, in Class 3A. Um, how excited are you to see George McIntyre open the season with a new coaching staff? I'm very excited. I mean, that's what CPA is saying they have to prepare against is that he's the best quarterback. That's what they're saying mm-hmm. is he's the best quarterback in the state. I know it's a toss up at, right. at one or two, but that he's the best quarterback that they're going to have to prepare against. And he has a great supporting cast around him with the line and also the weapons he has on the outside. I mean, I think that's going to be a fantastic game, and that one's actually going to be on Stadium TV nice. tomorrow. So that's yeah. that's going to be a big one on national national TV. And so, you've been here on the sidelines for a minute, and so you've seen, you've covered different teams. There's so many great athletes that come out of Tennessee in general, Middle Tennessee. Like, what is it with the programs that allow their athletes to really succeed and get to that next level? Well, whenever you look at the coaching staffs, I feel like they carry their practices very similar to a college level practice. They hold them to a different standard. I feel like that's something I've noticed with all of the schools that we've been going to is just how those coaches hold their student athletes. And yes, they are between 14 to 18 mm-hmm. years old, but they're holding them to a different standard as if they're 18 to that 22 ish range. And I think that's the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you even have. For example, tonight you have with the quarterback, he's trans Braylon's transferring in from Jacksonville. I mean, yes, his parents, they grew up in the or they lived in the Brentwood area before he was born. But you have a lot of families that are moving to Tennessee. I don't know necessarily Truth. for uh, I mean, there are a lot that are moving because of what their kids can do on their respective playing surface. But I mean, it's it's well known just the kind of talent and the caliber of teams mm-hmm. here in Nashville. Looking forward to that. Uh, let the people know, uh, Sammy, where they can find and when they can find you all tonight. So tonight we will be on my TV 30. So it is a live stream. You can watch there. If you go to Fox 17, you'll see, yep. you'll be able to get to all of the links that you can watch the game or if you have cable on channel 30. And uh, you can follow me at Sammy Kincaid, S-A-M-I-K-I-N-C. Awesome. Lovely. And welcome aboard, Sammy. Thank Thank you again for joining us. Call tonight. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. We've got Ravenwood Alcoa tonight, 645 pregame coverage, 7 o'clock kick. Tomorrow, Titans and Vikings, 4 o'clock Lee Company countdown to kickoff, 6 o'clock for Titans radio pregame coverage. Nashville SC and Enter Miami Leagues Cup final at 7, kickoff at 8 on the 104.5 The Zone app. I'm out of breath, and you probably are too. (laughs) The Buck Rising Show is next on 104.5 The Zone.